dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. A drop of dragon's blood wouldn't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, we'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. We'll roll the old dice and sing a song. Cause it's the end game time. Oh, a bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. A bottle of rum won't do us any harm. Cause it's the end game time. in the sea and dead men in the sand old salt marsh sleeps while its enemies plan best batten down your hatches there's a storm near at hand oh, we should have stayed on land oh we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song we'll roll the old dice and sing a song cause it's the end in time very much last time on missed opportunities the party finished outfitting their ship, receiving a full complement of crew, courtesy of, well, the persuasion of Mariah, of Inaris, and also a group of mysterious volunteers who agreed to help crew the ship for Mariah as long as she and the rest of the crew look the other way occasionally and not look too hard at what... Uh, what's been stowed down in the hold. Nothing, nothing, you know, nothing dire, just a little eyes off. And Not they enough. also had an audience with Gellin Primewater who offered them 10% uh, of the find or 10% of what he described as a fortune. He said that this treasure was discovered recently above a derelict ship called the Emperor of the Waves that had been gone for years and had just been spotted again. So the party set out to seek this fortune and bring it back to Prime Water. They discovered the ship lying very low in the water and uh, it's almost certain that her bilges and maybe even her some of her cargo levels were flooded, just drifting about aimlessly, the masts having been snapped off like twigs. It was there they discovered a infestation of sorts in the captain's cabin, or in the sort of collective rear cabins, a dark altar atop which stood a black stone altar obelisk emanating an imperious energy and kneeling before it were corrupted humanoid figures long sort of tentacles uh stretching out from their shoulders and uh shoulder blades they turned on the party attacked them but the party was victorious and after slaying three of these they heard a deep rumbling laughter rumble up but from below the wooden deck and that my friends is where we resume nether and talisi were unable to join this combat having been securing this jolly boat to the side of the ship certainly your only hope of escape should something bad happen you knew you needed to get uh, this uh, ship secured or this boat secured that you did and you climb up to find your uh Friends, slightly wounded, but for the most part, no worse for the wear. Now there's a bit of quiet. And it feels strange aboard this ship. As you're used to the Pixie's Fury, the newly christened ship. She dances across the waves. She will sometimes lumber but most of the time, um, she's nimble as she travels across the waves. And you feel the flow of the ocean. You feel it bobbing. This ship, the way it lies so low, the movement is sluggish and slow, 
like a bloated corpse waiting to sink down to the depths. It feels uncomfortable, strange to those of you with proper sea legs. Uh, this looks like a mess. It was gross. Ugh. They touch you. What happens I... when they touch you? They die. It's very uncomfortable. It's never visible. I don't know. DM, did you describe her as being visible on the way over? So, it is... It is up to you how you would like to do this. Um, if you would have liked, you would have been able to, in cover of darkness, under cover of a boat cloak, slip aboard and go to your cabin and be unnoticed. Um, and at the same time, if you wish to be hooded, uh, obviously the crew would see someone much taller than they were used to, but would not have gotten the full glimpse of you. So, the uh, reveal to the party, whether it was now or previously, is up to you. And Nether has taken great pains to not be seen, so okay. obviously at some point that's going to change. Um, it could be now, I suppose. But Nether. we'll say for now that you took one of the large boat cloaks and kind of have it over. Um, it's a little clumsy around the horns, but it's still a large enough cowl that it will then hood that it will fit over and conceal most of your transformation size notwithstanding right quite a bit taller than I was well I suppose you all have some questions hey get at your pace dear let me guess, the wild magic. Yeah, yeah, it, um... Oh, it carried Nether away, poor thing. Um... Close personal friend of hers. You can call me Debris. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I'm... Perhaps not. I, I think I'm probably vis trying, having difficulty keeping my mixed reaction to that decision off and entirely off my face, but I don't comment. And so she removes the boat cloak and stands with her head kind of down and cocked, long, long, dark green hair hanging kind of ring girl like down over her face she now has two sets of horns the one curling up and then the one sort of sticking more out and curling down um, dark green yellow at the tips skin has gone um, very very pale um, sort of a snow white color and um, sort of little green patina of cracks around her eyes as if there's a core of some sort of energy that's beginning to bleed through you can see it in her glowing eyes she has the um the helm of underwater action it's it's more of a band now um and it's come down and it's sort of very low on her forehead sort of half covering her eyes so you could just see the glow peeking out from underneath the band wearing a shawl made of many different lengths of fishing net and a leather sort of kilt like skirt um, and she's a lot taller than she was but slumped over and slouched sort of being very closed and has her hands close to her body You still look like Nether to me. Well, that's... That's strange, because Nether, Nether's not here. I'm sure. And uh, who um, is here? Debris. And Debris! Nether, how can, how, can, do, how yeah. do you spell Debris? Can you, can you spell that? For my notes? Yeah. Mm. Uh, 
as it sounds. D E E R I. About like debris. S. <laughs> Silent S. <laughs> Silent S. Oh, debris. Yes. Debris. <laughs> debris. Okay. I'm sorry, Shaw. The Neris will walk up and she'll take one of the feathers she has on her clothes and pull one off and hand it to her. You look like you could use one of these. Something invisibly plucks it from your hand and moves through the air and it lands on Nether's shoulder. Think of it like good luck. Debris. 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 Got it. I like the name Nether better. Hi, me too. I think both names are just fine. Not and that I it matters. I think <laughs> that we probably have more pressing concerns than the aesthetic qualities of naming, um, given whatever the fuck was in that room pointing over to, to the that. obelisk that's fair has anybody taken any time to look at this thing um not really quite yet although for, I, I f no i probably don't know this in character that there was some like strange little effect thing for those who entered the room i would though yeah or probably that, not yet has yeah okay, never, and, um, never mind have, have Freon so. and Sarayan left this cabin to go talk to the rest mm. of the crew? Oh, I assumed yeah. that I had. <laughs> okay. I'd be very careful. That thing in there tries to control you. What What mm. thing? Oh. The altar. Um, the, the thing on the table. Also, there was a voice, you know, just casually... For, for those of you who were with us during the, you know, the haunted house bit, you know, voices from beneath floors don't usually bode well one way or another, so, you know. Okay, okay. Caution. Mm. Um, DM, I probably still have Detect Magic up. It lasts 10 minutes, and I never lost concentration. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Um, can I focus on the obelisk and see what type of magic it is? If I haven't done that already. Yeah. Um, it would emanate a powerful um, enchantment and transmutation. Um, so the, the obelisk in there, it's, it's pretty magical. And um, it, yeah, I, 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 I think it's probably dangerous. Um, um. DM, um, are any of the bodies of the um, strange tentacle creatures out on the deck? Did we kill one out I here? believe you killed them all in the room. Okay. There was um, one in the doorway, I believe, but that was the closest they got. Okay. Um, I'm going to get as close as I can without actually going inside, um, and if there is one in the doorway, I'm sort of curious. Um, what is the state of their clothing? Hmm. Um, it's beyond threadbare. Mm -hmm. They, um, some of them, it's just rags. Some of them are barely wearing any clothing at mm -hmm. all. Okay. The, to identify it further, um, trying to determine an origin or an age or anything like that will require an investigation check. Happily, happy to make one. Um, if I could maybe get a little assistance, or rather, I could offer assistance to um, uh, the guy who's behind me. <laughs> Melvin. Thank you. Sorry, brain is not. <sighs> are you snappy? Are you um, like pulling the body out, and or are you going in the room to do so? I mean, investigation um, will require sort of a yes. hands-on look at so, everything. So. Um, if we can pull the body of the one that was in the doorway out, that would be stellar. And I am sort of specifically interested in, like, 
are they sailors or are they do they seem to have come from somewhere else um, yeah of course so you are able to drag the body out with someone else's help they look they're the um bones seem incredibly solid obviously the tentacles alone had been reaching out for you are enough to pull the body from so you kind of put a solid grip on this uh, tentacle and pull and it slide the body slides out a little bit lighter than you expected based on how hard Prion and Sarayan were striking it. Surprisingly durable or surprisingly light for how durable they are and you can pull it out and then indeed go through this one and make an investigation check. Did, did you want me to it, oh, yes, examine absolutely. them, or yeah. were you going to um, take the lead? I think that you should take the lead in this case. <laughs> okay. So I can roll Go an advantage. Go ahead and roll an investigation check. Melvin? Yes, All right. Advantage. On the crack and die, I have an 18 plus 6 is 24. Gotcha. Um, so, while... It would be easy to mistake this one's clothes for burlap, basically. You're able to take a bit of the cloth and pull it away from the body, and you kind of can tease through the threads and see beyond what has been sun-parched and sun-bleached and just rather covered in filth, some deep blue coloration to the threads as you tease it apart. And you also notice, sort of by the weave, um, what looked like burlap originally is tighter. Um, so you can't quite pull the threads apart as easily as you thought you would be able to. And um, at a yeah, at that high of a roll, you think this is probably more like a tarpaulin, a um, heavy, tightly woven but durable fabric, often used um, in uh, nautical purposes because it sheds uh, sheds water keeps warm but not um but not too warm so it, sailor's clothes to get this old it would have taken years to get to become this threadbare to become almost to go from tarpaulin to almost burlap yeah um does that how how long did gellen primewater say that this ship has been lost for he did not um specify and uh, I, of course i'm not talking about tarps that's a different type of tarpaulin yeah um, there's a, I, i'm pretty sure bless you um um yeah interesting so i thought that he, he did he said, say he, when it... he said it was I, I believe he said it might have even been closer to it was a few years that he okay so then said. that mm -hmm. tracks that so the thing that i'm curious about um and melvin maybe you can tell me whether this is just totally out of the question but what if this obelisk entrances people and then over time transforms them that would make sense. I mean, if they picked it up somewhere, um, that would explain why they went missing in the middle of nowhere. Is just if it transformed them, they and transfixed them, they would stop manning the ship and just drift. Um, maybe that's what happened, and then they got stuck in a storm or something and took on water. I I don't know much about ships, so I I don't know if that's feasible, but. That makes sense to me. Well, can we destroy mm. it now? I have protections up. I'd like to use them. Destroy the obelisk. Aye. Might be difficult. Magical, uh, magical items are typically hard to do any significant damage, any significant damage to in with mundane means. She's right. got a lot of means that aren't mundane. Give it a try. If that's what we want to do, do we need to destroy it? Well, a voice um, downstairs. we do need to get downstairs. This Is this the only way downstairs? I was about to say, we haven't checked the other side of the ship yet. So we could perhaps start there. And uh, is this great 
here, does that go below, DM? Or is that just for decorative purposes? <laughs> uh, no, it does. Okay. Um, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how about we just check off our boxes before going into the room with the scary obelisks that may or may not transform us into tentacly monsters that want to kill everything? You know, if we had something like a lead line box or something, we could put it inside it and then we wouldn't have to try to destroy it. Oh, if only. Oh. Useful I've things. got one right here. <laughs> no. Let me well, just pluck that from my other game. should do something. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's try the other door first. Unless anyone objects. Go right ahead. You're leading the way. So, sure. Rayan, for the sake of objecting, objects. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, Captain, my Captain. Amazing. All right. Uh, I'll stand back here while you do that. Okay. <laughs> um, um, look down the grate first, if I can. Okay. Um, there is no light coming from below. I know you have dark vision, but uh, please make a perception check. Perception. Plus five. Perception. Right. 17 total. All right. Not great, not terrible. Um, you look down, and it's it's tough to see with the angle because you have to get really low to the ground to um, see anything besides what is directly through this grate. Directly below, you see another hatch. This one appears to be wooden, with um, that's a full it's, it's a full hatch. So there's no way to look through it like this one. Looking around, you see a room and um, the. Uh, in a, a slight hallway. Um, there is, there are potentially a couple more doors and it looks like there's strands of maybe thick cobwebs or something strung across the hallway. That is what you see. I relay that information. Would you like me to open that door first, Mariah? And it is typical to see a grate below another hatch below this one because that's how you would put cargo directly down into the hold of the ship. Mm. Melvin's hiding behind um, Anaris. <laughs> By all means, Priyam, and I will step out of the way. I will check the door. Is it locked? Don't be What's muted. Going on? Zoom. Oh. It, Jade? Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, now, now again. Bizarre. I will check the door. Are you so examining it for trying to, or? No, I'm just going to open it. All right. So as you um, put your hand on the, the uh, brass knob, turn and sort of push, you meet some resistance. This door, you feel that the latch has been released but something beyond it is keeping it from being easily opened. I will try to kick it down. Okay. That's a good solution to a stuck door. Go ahead, please, and make a check of the... Um... Uh... A, um... Athletics check this time. Don't, don't Assassin's down. Creed Valhalla forcing this a door open a straight, is a two-man job. Straight strength check because... I know, right? <laughs> Which, which um, is it? Athlet I rolled a 16, so which one is it? It is athletics because you can kind of get a step back and step forward two steps and kick. It's not one where you just have to pry with pure strength. I've got a 21 so far. Yeah, so you hear this sort of um, ripping sound and a crashing of uh, wood and metal and some other objects. The door flies open and it seems that you have ripped from the walls a mass of cobwebs and other items. Um, so the, the, the loud noise now tumbling through the ship comes from the fact that the cobwebs were sort of attaching to everything. And as you flung the door open, you pulled down a stack of crates that clattered to the ground, their contents spilling everywhere. And now you see this room um, looks like potentially a navigator's room as there is a large map spread across a table to the fore. To your left, there is a stairway descending down into darkness. And to the right, it seems that all of the previous contents of this room 
cargo furniture alike. It's just wrecked, smashed, piled up to the starboard side. Maps, the, you say? I look at I the webs. Do they look like um, spider webs or just cobwebs? The... <laughs> Those are the same thing. Yeah. Are, they? are they? Do they? They're not necessarily the same thing, actually. But, um, mm -hmm. They're not. Big, I, are you're asking like baby baby spider or big spider that kills you? <laughs> Is she lobbing the ship? Is that that's the question? What is the yeah. age of the web? Yeah. Um, Priyan, as you kick open the door, you see a spider about the size of your fist crawl away mm. and up a web into the corner. <laughs> I'm so sorry, David. <laughs> <laughs> Save me Does he not like him. spiders? Because I don't like nope. spiders. I'm, an ar I I'm arachnophobic. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> I I do all of the uh, the spider hunts in the house. <laughs> sorry that we disturbed you. Is there anything that you would like us to particularly avoid as we move through? Are you using your beast speech? Um, there... And how does that work for the reply? Anything that they say yeah. back to you is Anything similar to... Anything they say, to... I can understand, yes. Okay. You hear um, a um, chorus of replies. Rats, rats, they scare the rats, they scare the rats, scare the rats, 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 plump, juicy, juicy, insides, melt the insides, slurp the insides, scare the rats, scare the rats, scare the rats. Do you want to eat the rats yes 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 why are there so many of you here how did you get on the boat in the middle of the sea yeah everywhere 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 all the corners all the corners everywhere are these unnaturally large beasts they as you see them some of them um, peek their little eight-eyed heads above um, the furniture and look around. You can see just the glint of the multiple eyes kind of shining out. Um, none that would be classified giant necessarily. None that would be medium-sized, but maybe a dozen or so that are larger than you would like to see. They just Are these just fantasy big uh, spiders? Do they, these size spiders exist or... Are they are they not known to be a not usually maybe not once usually. every once my matches while, only in Australia just, it's yeah right <laughs> so Nether's not aware of spiders infestations being something that is common on boats um not like this all right uh, they would certainly be something that would survive if a human crew died out are they uh, that's just logic um, are these these particular spiders poisonous to humanoids do I think. That would require a nature check. Um, Alrighty. Though, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Melvin, have you learned fireball yet? No, <laughs> I, I have firebolt. <laughs> that would be, I believe, a 18? 18. It's good. I can, I, um, I can make you breathe fire. That's yes. Um, based on your conversation with them, anything this big, um, while it might not have a... What am I trying to say here? While it may not have a venom that is meant to attack a human necessarily, it's not extra venomous any spider this size and multiple spiders are going to have a sort of hematoxin which is just meant to break down your innards basically so yes they are poisonous but not more so because there's more of their venom and less so because they're particularly poisonous species of spider does that make this sense sounds like swarm material to me I think that they're gonna leave us alone as long as we 
leave them alone, but try not to fall into a nest of them. Have you? I oh, want that map. Inside this room, Nether, it's full of spiderwebs. Wherever you tread. This is gonna. This could turn into oh, one of those spider. like heist movies where there's like all of those. Uh, <laughs> yeah, laser spray some powder cause, and all yeah. of a sudden all the lasers appear but instead it's like spider webs <laughs> well <laughs> it's we either we either try to get through the spiders and go down this way or we try to get past the obelisk and go down that way which do you prefer looking down the grate there's also a lot of spider webs down there uh prion not as many as this there you're correct but um, the yeah, better. Are the grates um, large enough? Are the holes in the grate large enough for something tiny to get through? Tiny, yes. Right, so I hold on to the side of the boat for a second as my perception goes down into the grate to look and see. Is that is the entire area down there? Is there, is there anything waiting for us to uh, jump out at us? Shelob. From what you can see, um, have your pixie make a perception check, please. Right. So, a natural, a not a natural, a dirty 20. Okay, dirty 20. Uh, not that your pixie sees, but going down there, they can see. Not a pixie, sprite. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, this area here that I've revealed to your left. And how about this grate? Is this something that we could remove and go down? Looking at it, there are hinges. It's meant to be removed. But it appears to be very, very rusty. There's a third option. We could go through the grate, although we'd have to break it. So this one, this one here. Spiders, obelisk. Well, we can see if we can break the grate, but I do still want that map. Yeah, I think we need the map. As the quartermaster, I would say we need that map. Would you like me to get it for you, Mariah? Wait a moment. And Nether holds onto her um, staff very tightly, and the top glows for a second, and a ghostly hand appears next to it. If this doesn't work, Brian, you're welcome to try, but let's avoid messing with the little crawlies. Why not? And I send in the mage hand to pick it up. Okay. Um, please make an arcana check using your charisma modifier. Interesting. So... Are you proficient in Arcana? I am not proficient in Arcana. All right, then it's a caster level check. Caster level check. Got it. Can two mage hands lift 20 pounds? Uh, I don't know how stacking mage hands I, I have I've rolled a 15, so that's plus four on the modifier, so 19. Wow. Um, theoretically, yes, I will say. Okay. What about three uh, mage hands? <laughs> So Nether, they can play to some fun games. You're able to see that this there are some heavy objects set on this, and indeed a dagger sort of stuck into the table as well. That would not be able to be moved, but you're able to judge the angle of the blade with that very high caster level check. You can push away some of the weights, just kind of push them off the floor as they topple and sort of bounce and make a little bit of a percussive sound off of the hollow wood floor and then ever so carefully tug the map so just along the line of the blade and it makes a slice but doesn't really damage anything doesn't rip or tear it or leave anything behind it's easily repaired and it slips out and you're able to carry it out and indeed with that the caster level check at a 19, very good. You are also able to sort of maneuver it around the webs to bring it out and not have any corners or bits of it get stuck in this sticky webbing. Ah. 
Mariah? There you You're are. You're a gem. Just, is, is there um, anything marked on it? Out of curiosity? Like, and I, by, sorry. Because obviously there's stuff on it because it's a map. But um, I mean, like, um, aside from land masses, have any marks been made to the map? Like, has anything been circled or are there any, like, plottings for courses? Things like that. Nothing obvious to uh, a navigator. You can see little dimples probably where the, um, the whatever the, I forget what that thing is called, the, the thing where you um, plot the distance and kind of rotate it around. Uh, you can uh, see I that totally that's been done. Called. I don't know what it's <laughs> called. <laughs> um, uh, but aside from that, the obvious, like any sailor would recognize this, that will also require investigation. Well, Melvin? Or history, um, if or anyone history. wants to look it over with a knowledge of um, um, I, sort I of do have, old symbols and such. I do have some familiarity with cartographer's tools and um, map making, if you okay. want me to take a look at it. Whatever manner of deduction you feel is best. If I can help, I will. I can assist if you sort of just are looking over it. I also have some familiarity with history, but I do I do sort of lend more on the navigation side of things than the actual like map side of things. While you're doing that, is it all right if other people try to get open the crate? Absolutely. Yeah, Whatever definitely. you guys would like to try. Sure. I will go and try and lift the crate. So Melvin and Mariah put their heads together, right. putting this map up against the sort of the bulkhead and take a look while some of you... Lise will definitely try to help <laughs> Jade okay. muscle open the great great. And I don't know, it's Serene may be superfluous at this point, but <laughs> for what it's worth, she's offering physical or emotional support. She's super okay. Um... It, it may be more emotional. It'll take one roll. Someone can roll at advantage. Um, it, again, the, um, well, first thing I will say is that the latching mechanism seems to be pretty much destroyed um, as you, of course, the first step in opening it is to open, sort of undo the, the latching. And as you, um, Prion, as you go to do that, the metal just snaps off. Um, the handle part has been rusted to a point of um, damaging its structural integrity and it that breaks off so it is latched rusted shut without um, a available handle to undo this metal latch so you think that either you're going to have to find a way to do away with that or somehow destroy the hinges or the lock itself or simply just pry it open but breaking through that metal is going to be immense uh, I'll try pry it open first okay do you have a crowbar I do have a crowbar so you and Talise get down there both uh, Talise you kind of lend your support and get that crowbar I do stuck under the metal grate crowbar. please make a strength check to try to pry this open I don't have a crowbar sorry no I, do so betrayed. I do have carpenter tools. What so. kind of adventurers are you? Um, let's, I'm getting advantage anyway, aren't I? So if there's two of us doing it. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a seagull. Okay. Yeah, I've got a seagull. A seagull bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I In the fight crow. between seagull and crowbar. Is it athletics? We need this one is, more thing and then we can have like... This is going to be a pure strength check simply to try to lift and break this open be stronger i really now want to come up with nice. a version of rock paper scissors that is something seagull crowbar but i don't know what the third element would be <laughs> uh i don't, I don't know what they do to each other <laughs> sorry <laughs> what's your roll jade i rolled double nines to 12. Hello. 12 it groans underneath the weight as you push up, keeping your back straight and hauling as hard as you can, but does not budge. Huh. 
try a different approach. Fireball. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, I will... Um, 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 could I take my rope and kind of weave it in the grating and, like, see if Creon could, and I could heave that? Maybe go at a different angle than just heaving directly up? Um, potentially. Ooh. Holy um, system. <laughs> Prion has used his, um, is, has used his check and you have assisted, but with this idea, someone else could probably try to make the strength check, um, using the pulleys in a bit of a different angle. Sorayan. I know I was going to make, Sorayan, could you get over here, please? Um, mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, you could. Mm -hmm. Okay. She is physically here. <laughs> Mentally well. somewhere else. So again, on one side you have two rusted hinges, on another you have a broken latch. And you're tying the rope to try and just yank it off. Is that the the idea? Yeah. Like a I was gonna say a tug of war for lack of a better phrase. Because I don't I'm assuming that we don't have um something that would be strong enough for us to use uh, for an actual pulley. You know, that point that you have to swing. Probably away. not. And actually, with, with an actual pulley requires sort of a dividing the length of the rope. So you would need bearings and a well, well-oiled things to sort of yeah, do that this way. Is, and also, this isn't even like a simple machine. This is literally, let's just tie a knot and pull the damn thing. Right, That's this is just, this is a handle, not a machine. Yeah, <laughs> gotcha. this is a tug of war. I want this thing open. We have guidance. I was gonna say, how long have we had a cleric that can guide us? No, she doesn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> You don't Guides use literally something. one of the best cantrips in the game. Hush up, hush up, hush up. No, I don't. <laughs> Nor do I right. use my D20 inspiration ever. Um, gotcha. So, Talise, you tie a uh, pretty decent knot. You feel it's uh, secure. Awesome. You now have a rope tied to a grate. Great. Great. It was my turn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Is, do I hear Sarayan? Are you going to try and heave this open? Yeah. Can we help? E yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I shall. Guidance. <laughs> okay, so am I rolling a d20? You are. This is going to be a um this is going bonus. to be a strength Guidance. check to try to break open this grate. Nope. Does she get advantage can... if we can help her? Yeah, does she get advantage yes. for that? And then does she yes. get a, a nice D4 because I awkwardly guidance? Nice you did D4. give some awkward guidance. Uh, That's the only so... kind she Which has. I think would be the kind that Sarayan would be most receptive to is awkward guidance. As a fellow Probably. awkward girl. Yeah, let's not lie to ourselves. If she were too smooth, Sarayan would not know what to do with herself. The, the might of Persona and Volker united. Let's That's see if it terrible. can do it. All right, gonna roll my cracking dice. Ba -da -da -boo -da -da -boo. Cracking dice. Uh, I rolled an 11 plus three is 14. You have advantage? And then that yeah. means I get to roll another time because that's how advantage works. <laughs> so I'm gonna roll my cracking dice. Ba -da -da -ba -da -da -da. Cracking dice. And I rolled a 12 plus three, 15. Plus your plus D4. And then I get a D4 to roll on my crack dad. No, I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> Too much. We have the capacity to make a whole jingle out of that. Ba -da -da -ba -da -da -da. Crack and dice. Gosh darn it. Where is my D4? It's yeah. the one that hurts the most. The yeah. Yeah. What hurts the, the most drop. is being so close, having so much to say, and watching you walk away. No, just me. <laughs> That's their lyrics so, to a song. I found it. For a moment, I was like, "Did I do that to you recently?" So emo. <laughs> what hurts the most is being so close. Crack and dice. Uh, I rolled a three. <laughs> What's your total, Sarayan? Fifteen you... plus three is eighteen. That took a while. Yay! Ba -da -da, um... ba -da -da -da. Crack and dice. Woo! <laughs> so you hear a great. Um, uh, 
snapping sound, um, and then a groan of metal on metal as it sort of crunches and the rusty hinges give way as the, <laughs> the grate is pulled open. It's now sitting at a 90 least. degree angle up from the deck, but open. And you hear a set of heavy footsteps beneath the deck that you are standing upon. Ooh. And a sound as if someone is pulling a door shut. Hmm. Is anyone from our, our our team down there or? Nope. Oh, someone's Melvin down there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Also, um, nope, I was going to say something. I totally forgot what it was. Never mind. Um, yeah. Oh, how's our map? How's our map perusal going? <laughs> right. So in the meantime, um, you, you have just been disturbed from your investigation. Um, but let's see how that went Ow. first. Uh, what, please, are we doing an investigation and a history or what is the... I'm granting advantage for Melvin on either investigation or history because I can't grant him advantage on cartographer's tools. Okay. And the cartographer's okay. tools, Melvin would probably not be... It would be useful to determine how well the map is drawn, potentially, but using cartographer's tools is more about putting terrain into an understandable map. Um, right. Beyond that, cartographer's tools isn't necessarily going to help you better. Um, if you're proficient, you can understand a well-drawn map. That's quite, you know, th th that's that's the, the sense you get. It probably wouldn't glean you any interesting information. Um, so I will do a, it doesn't really matter. They're both the same. What do you, what do you guys want me to do? History or investigation? Whatever floats your boat, kid. Uh, cool. whatever you do, just like share what you figure out with Sarayan. Cause That's she's already present. got her notebook back up. Um, I'll do an investigation check. And on the crack and die, I have a 14 plus six is a dirty 20. Dirty 20, nice. I can't remember which one, which check you said you made. In investigation. <laughs> investigation, right. Um, so looking carefully over this map, um, it looks, it looks current, looks like a good map of most, a, a good portion of the Sword Coast here. Um, two things are marked with a symbol that you do not recognize. Um, a simple one, just meant to be probably set in a um, in a legend that does not exist on this particular map. But they are the same. One is set just north of Baldur's Gate, just a bit off the coast, kind of in the middle of nowhere. Another one being out in the Moonshay Isles. Um, mm. You're familiar with maps of the Sword Coast in particular. Where these are marked are not necessarily, or are not um, typical, um, typical markings on a Sword Coast map. They're minor, minor cities. At least in the one, in the case of the one north of Baldur's Gate, there's nothing there. And then on the Moonshay Isles, there is a port city that you've heard of, but it's strange that it would have a more important marking than, you know, the same size as something as Baldur's Gate in a random sort of city, uh, port city mm. in the Moonshay Isles. So this is on land, these marks are, not in the water? Yes, okay. correct. Um, just out of curiosity, um, having some backstory familiarity with the Moonshay Isles is, uh, a, is a check appropriate to determine further what this place is? Yeah, so you would know. I guess you did grow up, right? And um, um, spent time there, um, and was. Um, I have this in my notes. Da 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 da. -da. I served in the uh, navy out there. <laughs> okay, uh, in, in oh, that case, no. you would know that for whatever reason, more prominently marked on this map is Port Alucine. Interesting. Which is a um, uh, city of 
rather small importance. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Make a note of that for later. <sighs> oh, nice job on that grape, by the way. Yeah, well done. Great. Uh, oh, great. Th thank That's you. Awesome. Sarayan does like a very poor flex. <laughs> <laughs> She, her armored uh, arm comes up and it's like you flex, but you realize you cannot see anything different because it's armored. <laughs> it's like when I did the makeup videos and hid with the makeup I was using by my hand. Yep. <laughs> great product, exactly great product. Exactly like that. But now you have this passageway about revealing about 10 feet down to the ground um, below. It is dark. There is a hatch below, and that's all you see. Who wants to go into the dark bowels of the ship first? <laughs> if we're going Why is have... everyone so scared? Sarayan jumps in. Yep. <laughs> Perfect. Sarayan, you Selfie. jump down with a, a heavy thud, and you hear a sort of echoing sound as from the door here, you hear sort of a thumping sound um, and then a, a, a thumping sound and then one final impact upon this door. And that is all you hear down there. Actually, what is your passive perception, Sarayan? <laughs> I was just say, does it look good? She is muted. She's doing... Uh, uh, I said that it was a hundred. No, it's ten. <laughs> One hundred p. All right, that's all you hear is that thump against the door to the south. I'm like, ah, it seems fine. Why do I not believe her? I will jump down as well. Yeah, Another I'll join thump. you. Okay, I guess, is, guess we're all going. Is anybody going to put a rope or something down? Well, I, I. Oh, if you wait like two seconds, I'll untie and retie my rope. I can catch you in the right? I'll, I'll wait for the rope, thanks. Tying. I don't really know knots tying. As you're tying, um, <laughs> is anyone else waiting above while she ties the rope and throws it down? <laughs> Sounds like I'll, Melvin. I'll wait I need above. to know who is down in the hold at the moment. Or not in the hold, down in oh, the lower the level. Hold. In the hole. Not... Melvin has okay. to have somebody to stand. So on. it looks about accurate to what your tokens are right now. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then in that case, Mariah, Prion, and or just Mariah and Prion, what are your passive perceptions? Oh, my passive is 16. 15. Okay. Both of you can hear from beyond the room what sounds like a low chanting. Mm. Like a single humanoid mumbling to itself. You hear that, Prion? Aye, that I do. That's the sound of imminent danger. <laughs> and what does it sound like for my notes? Um, is it pitched? <laughs> Which, okay, great. Which door is it, DM? The one directly to the south. This one. Is there danger? All oh, right. almost certainly, yeah. Y'all should get 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 Nether your little will cast down here. Armor of Agatha. <laughs> I'm not the knot master. I'm stay up there for a minute. Not the knot master. <laughs> not the I'm the thigh master. <laughs> <laughs> I look to Mariah. I say, I suggest you get around the corner. Yeah, that's a fair plan. Alrighty. Oh, also, out of curiosity, since I am stepping into this hallway, um, what's the a little hard to hear you off your mic. Off your oh mic. gosh, <gasps> I'm so sorry. Um, so what's the difference between this, which is clearly a door? Oh, so as this... you as you are down here now, you can see, um, that uh, this is the passageway up to where you were more, before. Or hallway. Got it. Okay, I'm stepping down that way. All right. I'm preparing my crossbow. Right, a bolt loaded. Prion, you're up next to the door, and you can hear this 
chanting, continuing. What you doing in there? You, um, uh, hear it stop for a moment. Um, uh, um, ensuring what is owed. Okay. <laughs> Are you ready, Sharan? And again, this chanting begins to continue. Um, sort of a reaching of, a bit of a peak. Uh, just out of curiosity, is this the same voice that kind of yelled at us menacingly from below when we it ended is a last bit different. session? A bit different. Uh, that, Fascinating. Oh, yelled at you from below. Sorry. The one... The, the voice from the obelisk, it is not, but the one you heard laughing from below, yes. He. Um. Go kick their asses! Well, let's get the party started. Singular ass. I don't know how many asses they have. <laughs> I will lift you, my shield. As, and as you say that, and Priyan, as you lift, you hear the chanting stop, and you hear, You are too late. Oh, no. They who absconded will face the depths. They who absconded will face the depths. Interesting. Very good. I lift the shield and open the door. Okay. As you put, as you start to push towards the door, push the door, um, you realize it is stuck again. I'm going to cast Mage Armor while I'm waiting for the rope to be okay. put down. I'll try to boot oh. At about this point, probably, Talise has finished dropping her rope. I dropped it. I'm sorry, guys. I've got paper mache covering my body now. Anyone else going down before Prion tries to uh, open the door again? I'm still up top with Melvin. Can Saran help him open the door? Sure, she would like. Nether, ah! will, Nether will make her way down. I'm gonna like poke my head into the into the hole. Not not all the way down, but just just looking. Um, On three. Trying to kick the door down. Two. Shit. Okay. Make an athletics. No, check. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I thought we were counting down. I'll actually roll. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, we're doing a bit. Sarayan, <laughs> roll an athletics check with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Uh, oh, 14 plus 3 is 17. So, no, wait. <gasps> My athletics is higher, actually, I think. Hold on. I was trying to go off of brain knowledge. It is. Uh, 14 plus 5 is 19. Hey. Um, 19. Very good. The door flies open and you hear this snapping sound. Revealed before you is what seems to be a chamber oh, being no. used for some type of ritual. Um, in the center, near the mast, are a couple items that seem to be attached to the mast with daggers. They seem to be dripping with water. And then in three separate places around it, um, at three focal points on a foul symbol, there are also um, objects set on the ground, and the whole place sort of thrums with energy. Um, it actually feels like the floor is vibrating and um, just sending out vibrations out across the ship. Looking up at you is a um, figure a humanoid wearing tattered clothing um, and almost in a sort of symbiotic relationship, it seems like, with an octopus or something attached to his shoulder. The tentacles wrap, almost choking him 
so tight you can imagine it would be hard for him to breathe and also wrap across his eyes and down his arm. He looks at you and you see accompanying him is one of the same creatures from before. Um, these sort of, this sort of corrupted humanoid with these tentacles coming out from his shoulders and writhing around. This one seems to be in pain by bursting through the door. It seemed to have been holding it shut and two of these tentacles have sort of snapped and are lying just twitching on the ground. This nerve energy that is um, still barely coursing through them, causing them to just slowly uh, twitch. And the figure turns its blind head towards the door that had just been kicked down and says, It is complete. Why have you come? Rian, you want to take this one? Or? We were, we were asked nicely. Should we just deal with these things? Ugh. I mean, if I'm they trained just in wanna, diplomacy, like, I don't. I mean, I don't know. If he just want to keeps doing his thing and doesn't really care if we check the hold of the ship or the thing that we came here for, then like I'm totally cool. But if he wants to kill us, then we obviously need to fight back. <clears throat> you see a smile spread across its toothy face. Some of his teeth are sharp, almost fang-like. Others hang. Um, brown and like little nubs like a malnourished human. Aw, sweet toothy and across face. this broad <laughs> smile it makes. I, as I said, you are too late. Too late for All what, right. dude? So are we fighting him? <laughs> the debt must begins be paid. Pulling out her. <laughs> What are you referring to when you say that debt? And who are we talking to right now? Yeah, I suck in that question. I am that which was called to claim it. That is all. Still kind of a borderline pronoun in game there. That's pretty big. Yeah. Right. The pact was forgotten by them, but not by the rest. And so they will pay. So they will pay. So that doesn't include us. And or... um, hang, you can now see hanging from the sort of part of the mast, which extends below the ship here. The items become more clear. There is a, what looks to be a flag stuck dripping with salt water. And it looks to be, have the insignia of the Salt Marsh Council. There is a silver coin that has been minted, it seems, in Salt Marsh. And then finally, some type of writ or something with a seal of the Salt Marsh Council, perhaps a map or some sort of other official document also stuck to the masthead with a dagger. And as this salt water, seemingly come from almost nowhere, continues it continues to um, drip almost faster and faster. Like, even though it is dripping and shedding this water, it is doing so faster rather than more slowly. And the reddish tint comes, almost as if these documents begin to bleed on the ground, that red, brackish liquid sort of beginning to swirl and mingle with the ritual circle drawn beneath. Do you mean harm to salt marsh? Is the vein the marsh council? belongs to the deep now. Oh. Eldritch Blast. Yeah. Initiative. Um, I would still How's have. How's it going, guys? Uh, protection versus evil up. It's ten minutes, right? Yes. All right. That checks out. Um, do those of us up at the top know that something is happening? Yeah, like, um, how much probably I by about this point, the... it's not. Um, <laughs> you realize that your allies have begun to fight something. So, so yes. Oh my god, it's terrible. Uh, so, should those of us up top roll initiative? Yeah. 
Yes, please. Yep. Everyone roll initiative here. Tutti initiative. Tutti initiamo. Tutti a tavola. Mangiare. Tutti. Mangiare. Lydia. I live for you, queen. Um, I adjust my um, roll twenty initiative was it rolled twice, so I adjusted it to the first roll, Peter. I trust you. Is everyone wow, on the tracker, bold. do you see yourselves? I see myself. Mm -hmm. Right, sounds like yes. Mariah, Ooh. that means you will be first up. Um Oh peer around the corner. Um I think I've got a nice uh, potential shot here against um, cracking the Kraken face. So let's give that a try. Uh, for 20. Oh yeah, even with a bit of cover, an awkward shot leaning around the corner and going past Rain and Prion, you land the shot. For nine points of piercing damage. Oh wow. Kind of want to say that I like low key, like as I come around the corner, I like Pull my, put my arm over Sarayan's shoulder. I'm like, oh, sorry, babe. Shoot. <laughs> All right. I like that. All right. Up next is this one who, though bleeding, still has one tentacle left. Um, it looks to be quite damaged. Not at all at full health. We'll reach out towards you, Prion, the one who dared to break down the door. Do I get cover? We will step here and extend a tentacle with a 22 to hit. Do I get cover? It is a melee attack. And did you roll at a disadvantage? Oh. I have a 16 in that case. Thank you for reminding me. That's all right. That's what I'm here for. That's what all I'm right. here for, Could you turn yourself up a little bit? I'm having a little bit really? trouble hearing you. I don't know what yeah. it is. Still a little quiet. Maybe I just need to turn down the music. Is that, uh, is that any better? Right. So that tentacle bounces off of your shield, you're able to bat it away, and that is the end of its turn. Nether. Enemies of Saltmarsh, and she concentrates, and there's a sort of a sucking sound as power coalesces the top of her um, uh, staff, and then force blast goes shooting down the hallway at the tentacle creature that is attacking Prion. Gotcha. Hitting AC... 19 doing four points of um, force damage. All right, it staggers back. You've blasted open a part of its sort of carapace-like flesh. And is there anything else from you? Is that it? So that is it. All right. Now its turn comes and it speaks some words and the sh entire ship again seems to vibrate and shake in the water, thrumming with this the energy of this ritual circle. Then it subsides a bit, and you hear, coming from behind you guys, a number of um, uh, sharp impacts upon the wood, like a large creature is moving just beyond this door. And then, as it calls forth that, it will begin to cast a spell, and a sphere of fire will appear as it will send it through the door and impacting next to Prion. It will, he will try to um, hit you with this flaming sphere it has summoned that is now spinning around like a vortex of fire next to you. I need you to make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, do I get something against summons? Against what? Something that's been summoned. It's not technically a summon. It's not. A, it's it's a, just a spell. Okay. It's a dexterity. Dexterity, you yes, say, please. yeah? God. Uh, I rolled a seven. All right. Um, you take <laughs> four points of fire damage. Okay. And that is the extent of the turn. It stays there. All right. Talise, you are up. Your allies are in combat. I would like to shimmy down the knotted rope. Shimmy, 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 shimmy. However much movement that's going to take. And then that will put me... Climbing is half speed. Yeah, I just don't remember how... 
I don't know how high it is, so. Um, so it's going to take you, it's 10 feet down. So it's going to take you 20 feet to get down to their level unless you jump. Let's not do that. I will shimmy down, shimmy, shimmy. All right, so 20 feet of movement to get to the level right next to either Nether or Saran. There you are. There I am. I will then... Something will behind then, us. Behind us, behind us. Uh, I will then cast Bless on Saran, Prion, and Debris. Because I know her name. It's not Nether. It's All Debra. right. The, the, the three of you feel enhanced by Volker's blessing. Anything else for Talise? No. Concentrating on bless Melvin. Yep. Um, well, I'm gonna move over there and shimmy down the she shimmy down the rope. Okay. It's gonna be um, most of your movement, I believe. Uh, 10, 15, yeah, probably 25 feet of movement to get down there. Yep. Um, so I'm going to be stuck here. Um, I'm going to move behind Prion so that there's space for Daenerys still. Okay, you feel the heat of this sphere mm -hmm. immensely as you move there. I uh, carefully move my, my spell book out of the way of the fire, just in case. Yep. Uh, and then um, I will make a check mark in my book running off the edge of the page at the um at the the creepy guy with the, the octopus on his face um and i need him to make a intelligence saving throw dc 14 as i cast mind sliver uh, i have a nine an unfortunate one point of psychic damage um okay. and he has a 1d4 away from his next saving throw until noted. the end of my next turn. Uh, noted, like you know. Anyway, anything else? Um, no, that's that's it. Please make a dexterity saving throw as the fire burns hot next to you. Mm -hmm. A ten. That is a failure. Take eight points of fire damage. Okay. And. At the end of your turn, you hear this crashing sound as the bulkhead behind you is utterly demolished. A large creature, two huge spiky claws and um, where you would imagine a normal lobster or crab head would be, this sort of squid-like cephalopod head is sitting there with um, these feelers kind of reaching out and it starts to lumber forward with these two massive pincers snapping in your direction. It will come forward to there and make a pincer attack against let's see, neither are nether odds to least evens. I rolled a 10, so Talise, um, the Kraken has spoken, and you will be the first one to take an attack. I have a 25 to hit natural 19 on the die. That doesn't hit? Um, ah. it, um, <laughs> it oh. does, in fact. You feel it clench around you. The spikes on the claw begin to pierce through your armor. You cannot move. You are grappled and you take 13 points of bludgeoning damage as it crushes you in its claw. Oh God. Um, and then it will actually reach out with its other pincer towards Nether with an eight to hit. That's lovely. Um, and then Neither hits will... nor takes cold damage. Oh, that's, yeah, interesting. So, this creature then brings you a little bit closer to itself, um, uh, uh, Talise, and these tentacles start to reach out mm -hmm. towards your flesh. I need you to make a constitution saving throw as you feel the stinging burn of them contact your skin. A six. Bye, guys. Um, 
And as much you as I hate to say it, also a constitution saving throw for her plus. No, I was wondering. I was like, is he going to let me get away with it? Car concentration. I know. I believe it is going to not be an option regardless because while oh, you cool. feel this poison begin to course through your body, you go cold and your body becomes rigid and you are paralyzed. Oh, bye, guys. Yes. Okay, bye. <laughs> The healer that is, down. is the end of that the thing's turn. Down. Prion. Does that mean bless drops? It Absolutely. does. Absolutely. You guys never got to use it. Sorry. Jade, your your muty pie. We cannot hear you, friend. A muty cutie. Yeah, it's just you know, mic mute and all that sort of stuff. Um, is the creature still where it currently is on the map? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to hope my friends can deal with that. And I will move past this thing and to there. My seagull right. comes in to distract. Okay. And I will try to boom and blade this thing. If possible. I rolled an 18 and a 9. So that 18 is, is definitely going to hit. Well, it's 18 on the dice plus God knows what. Yeah, yeah. Don't uh, worry about so that. So 3 plus 3 damage. 6 damage, sir. 6. And he becomes sheathed in that energy. It does indeed. It doesn't look, it doesn't turn its head to you. It looks as if it is simply aware of everything around it at the moment. Um, does it have to make a concentration check? Uh huh. I believe so. Indeed. Um, I have a six, and the flaming sphere disappears. Thanks, Brian. Good. Good. Anything else from Prion? That's all I can do. All right. Inaris. All right. So what can I see from where I'm at up here? Looking down the, the ladder. Nothing from here. Um, oh, from there you could probably see through the grate and see the large pincered creature that is now squeezing your paralyzed friend. That's what I need. Okay. So, I want to know if I can shoot that little thing with my short bow through the grate. Uh, the grate is open. Um, yeah, it's a very large creature. So, well, it's a large creature. But, so awesome. yes, I would say you do have a shot. Do I get sneak attack since I'm close enough? You do, not have, an enemy, you do not have an ally threatening it as it is holding... Sorry, I'm trying to reveal this. Uh, as it is holding Talise at range. Okay, I'm going to attack it. That is a 20, and so 25 wow. total. That's a natural 20 is what That's I'm hearing. That's a natural 20. Beautiful. All right, go ahead and roll damage. Right, do not grab my friend, you nasty little thing. Okay. This critical so hit doesn't apply sneak attack, does it? No. No. How do I get my additional critical damage here? I'll just take that. It's exactly the same. Yep. It's, awesome. it's factored in, so. Perfect. 11 points of damage. A beautiful shot comes arcing above your barely conscious head, Talise, sinking into the chitin of the creature that is grappling you. you 11 damage. Very good. Perfect. Anything else from Inaris? That is all I can do at the moment. Saray, and a lot is happening around you, but it is now your turn. Great. So Sarayan is going to move through the space that um, Talise's token is still occupying. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm assuming since she's not there, I don't. It doesn't count as like the. It still counts as difficult terrain. You're still moving through her occupied space, but oh, you can enough. get through there. Okay, great. So I will take my movement to get right up in the face of Go this icky chitiny creature. And I will roll an attack with my longsword. 
Swing away. And I rolled a 14. 14 is going to bounce off of its armored carapace, unfortunately. Well, beans. Beans. Yeah. Beans indeed. Okay. So I guess that's all I can do. All right. We'll go on to Mariah. Alrighty. <laughs> um, I have curiosity. Um, does, was the effect that um, Melvin created using Mind Sliver, has that been utilized yet? It, it would have been used for his concentration. It would have? Okay. It, if the concentration check counts as a save. It is. Okay. Alrighty then. Um, ugh, so many threats. So little time. Um, only three. <laughs> uh, um, I will reach around the corner again, past Talise, and shoot the fellow. Um, although I, I suppose, um, I, would I not have an issue with cover if I move to here? Uh, yeah, you'd get a pretty clear shot there. All right. Uh, excuse me, Talise. Sorry, squeezing. Um. Always polite, the captain. <laughs> get out of the way! <laughs> uh, oh, not good. That was a nine. I think I tripped. Yeah, um, indeed. Um, yep. Talise is a bit like, uh, what? And knocks and looks around and just barely knocks the bow, the crossbow, or bumps into you and send the quarrel Ching. into the ground. Oh, I'm well. paralyzed. I'm going to squeeze back. blame me for that. <laughs> oh, that's true. You can't blame <laughs> me right, for that at all. You can't even do anything. <laughs> Grappled right. and paralyzed. Not my fault. This creature is going to shut the door here. Class. Shut the front door. To here and... I was waiting for it. <laughs> then um, go and attack Prion with its remaining tentacle. Um, ah, 16 again. Missed. I had a nice roll. I had a nice 24 in there, but your darn spell on yourself is keeping you up. So that's that for its turn. It will stand against the door there. Nether. Nether hunches down a little bit in her south, and there's a a, a, a crackle of power from her eyes, um, and uh, some water around, uh, just sort of s that seeped into the wood and from rain and from the sea, just sort of coalesces around her as she says, "Akrithasilith." And she casts Phantasmal Force upon the um, lobster creature. Oh. It's an intelligence saving throw 14. All right. I have a three. In that case, what it sees, and nobody else sees, unfortunately, because it's like, kind of cool, is it sees and feels... Um, the paladin, uh, sorry, the cleric, uh, pulling apart its uh, uh, claw and crawling up its arm and jumping, like crawling over it, landing behind it and smacking it with uh, her, uh, her mace. So it looks to it like it has escaped her and is now crawling over her. I'm hoping that will mean it will try to grab her again thereby releasing the actual uh interesting so um yeah we will see what it does on its turn it takes uh, damage on its turn too yeah, let me see here yes uh we could the the max it deals is 1d6 it's psychic All damage right. In the meantime, this um, creature repositions itself and extends a hand to you. Oh, Rion. did it move? Um, yes. 
six damage. All right, as that explodes around it, and then a greater thunderous sound erupts. I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Uh, uh, uh. Is it, uh, hang on. Okay. I rolled a 14 total. 14, I think, I'm is gonna... enough. Yeah, spells at 12. So you take four points of thunder damage and you are not knocked back by its spell. Okay, I roll concentration and I rolled an 18 on the dice. Four thunder damage. Yeah? Yep, that is correct. And that is it. And then Talise, it is now your turn. Does the creature next to me take it? No. I. God damn it. Rabble paralyzed turn. Unfortunately, yes. Um, <laughs> so, yes, you are paralyzed, but you spend your turn in paralysis and can repeat your constitution saving throw. Look, I do it. Remember, you have in inspiration. Uh, I already clicked it. I can't use. I forgot, and I. I don't. Unfortunately, think I can use my once D20. you've rolled, you cannot decide to yeah. uh, to do that. So, with an eight, unfortunately, you cannot throw off this poison. It remains. How much damage do I take? None. Yet. Cool. And it is Melvin's turn. Um. Well, I. I'm gonna. Pull out my book again, and with my quill, I'm gonna um, point at the um, this creepy tentacle face monster. The door is closed. You cannot see. Oh, the him. door is closed. Never mind. I'll turn around then, um, and I will point at the giant lobster instead and cast um, firebolt. Okay. Is there any sort of taking damage save from the uh, the phantasmal force? Or anything like that? No. Okay. No, it's. It could, I'm concentrating on it, but as long as I'm concentrating on it, it sees what I want it to see. Cool. Uh, I think it Seventeen. Can make an, it can make an investigation, investigation check. check. Yeah. To on see if it's yeah. yeah. Um. Yes. Yeah, so seventeen to hit the giant lobster. Yes. Yes. It hits absolutely. Ooh. One point of fire damage. Does some damage. Not a lot. Loving those minimum rolls. That's okay. Um, that'll be that'll be my turn. I guess. All right. So the creature looks at its claw and starts to loosen the grip, and you see Talise begin to slide out of it as it goes with its other claw to try and grasp grapple at it, and and then it stops. Its tentacles flit around a bit and it focuses in your direction, Nether, and then holds Talise all the tighter. Am I taking it any damage now... from being squeezed tighter now? <laughs> nope. It takes two points of damage. Has what it... happens if the creature realizes it's under the effect of a spell? Uh, it can make an investigation check as its turn to see whether or not it determines it's an illusion. It has determined it's an illusion. Ah, well, in that case, uh, it wouldn't take the one point of damage. The, okay. the damage is dealt on your turn. I, I think it still would take the damage from the, the psychic assault. So All right, one point of psychic damage. One point. All right. Done. And mm. then... That is it. All right. Um, Prion, it is your turn. Oh, okay. Um, my seagull will come in to the guy that's holding the door, and I attack him. I see he's holding it up with a booming blade yet again. Oh, shit. Rolled a seven and a six. I'm going to use my d6 inspiration the seven is it. currently a 12 plus four 16 to hit that'll do it uh 
And that is, oh my god, six damage again. Six, and with this one's wounds already sustained from your entrance and from whatever role it played in the ritual, it fells this one. Good. You are left alone with the priest. Hey, how you doing? It simply stares at you. Apathetic. How you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Uh, can me. I open Daenerys. the door? You can open the door. Yeah, I will move to open the door. Okay, yep. Yeah. Free interaction. Open the door. You're all right, guys. Daenerys. Oh, I'm going to go Hello, forward and with my shore bow again. Where's my button? Here we go. Come on, 19 to hit. Um, 19, uh, uh, yes, absolutely hits. Perfect. You now have sneak attack. Awesome. Harris is going to fire at it from above. That is 15 points of damage. Oof, a great hit. <laughs> another arrow embeds itself and it begins to bleed a black greenish liquid. Good. All right, unless there's anything else, we'll go on to Sarayan. That, 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 anything else? Chelsea, no, no, okay. Yes, no, oh, okay. <laughs> so, Sarayan, um... I have no idea what sort of sounds a lobster might make, but I, I don't know. I imagine it's like, like whatever. I don't know. That's what I imagine. And so I'm going to use the spell command to speak to the lobster in primordial, hoping it's like a giant, hoping it speaks that and goes okay. like to drop my friend. So you're commanding it to drop. Yee. All right. What kind of save? Uh, it is a. Yes, I. Beep boop bop. Let me just double check. Yeah, wisdom of twelve. I have failed with a seven. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Anything else? Uh, so if I've done. Yeah. No, just kidding. Because I'm out of spell slots. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Cool. Very good. We will go back to Mariah again. Um. Oh, that door's open. Um. Oh, definitely can't see this dude from where I am, though. All right. Um. Pardon me again. Um. Oh, sorry. You can't do anything. You're frozen. Um. Looking over Melvin's shoulder. I. Uh, Let's see here. I'm going to whistle a very unhappy tune into the uh, priest's. Just whistle mind. a crappy tune. I no. whistle a crappy tune. <laughs> it really, really sucks. Roll a wisdom save. Please fail. Wisdom save versus fort. That's a lot. Uh, I have a 17. So he will take uh, seven points of psychic damage. Um, we'll see that this um, uh, octopus is this kind of wrapped around and begins to sag a bit. And one of the tentacles sort of falls halfway off of its eyes and you just see hollow black spaces where any eye used to be. Oh, oh, that is unpleasant. Um. Yeah, Prion, please kill this thing, like, like now, please. Um, you're good at that. Thumbs up. Have a bardic inspiration. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. And we'll be on to Nether. I'm moving back into my hallway. <laughs> right, Nether sort of cocks her head at this thing and takes 10 steps back to stand next to Melvin and shoots it with a Eldritch Blast. This is the water that she's been using to cast her spell. She 
releases concentration on that, and it swirls up and coalesces into a bolt of force, hitting AC 17 plus 6, so a lot. Oh, yeah. Doing a total of... Yeah, that went on the floor. Out of sight. Seven points of force damage. Okay. Takes a chunk out of its chitin, but it's still looking mean. And anything else from Nether? Sounds like a new. All right. So, uh, Prion, you are still here with uh, the priest who is looking awful, but you will see a sort of deep purple blue energy start to manifest in that empty eye socket that's been revealed and um he will the will again burst into flame and he will send another flaming spear sphere next to you and try to ram you with it it's a dexterity saving throw mm. he will put it in the space behind you to your I wrote a four there. Rolled a four. Alrighty then. We will go ahead and take 11 points of fire damage. I react to it and put my hand up and ex uh, absorb half of it. Very cool. Talise, you are still paralyzed, locked in the grasp of this creature. You may try to shake off the poison once again. You um, start fighting, you think you breathe heavy, or at least you try to, and you feel your joints slowly start to loosen, and you are no longer paralyzed. But it is the end of your turn, I'm sorry. Melvin. Hmm. Uh, that door is open behind me, right? Um, is there a flaming sphere here? Yes, behind Prion, right here. That's where you put it. Okay, I, I don't see anything there. Oh, I, I might be pinging on the wrong level. But to Prion's right, within the room, is where the flaming okay. sphere I, I, is. I just, there's no icon for it, that's all. That's correct. I deleted oh. it and cannot find it. No worries. I was <laughs> just checking. Um, well, I don't like that. But, uh, guess, um, I'll go ahead with the um, I'll make another check mark in my book, run it off the end of the page toward Mr. Octopus Face, and um, I need him to make an intelligence save as I cast Mind Sliver again. All right. Well, that's a better roll. Mr. Octopus Face has a seven on his intelligence save. And he takes four points of psychic damage and has a d4 subtracted from his next saving point. All right. You see the octopus wrapped around him sort of shrivel, and the last tentacle falls over from his face and revealing two empty eye sockets, and his jaw just kind of goes slack, and both human and attached beasts slump to the floor, dead. And you hear um, um, a... Um, uh, voice echoing in all of your heads as this octopus kind of twitches on the ground and you hear an imperious tone saying the debt will be paid that which is here and much much more and then it falls limp Good job, anything kid. else for Melvin I did a thing guys Dead. Uh, no, that'll be it. Did, did the flaming spear disappear? Um, it did. Okay. And now, the uh, thing starts its turn, and it just sits there, unmoving, and simply opens its claw, and Talise, you fall to the ground, released from its grasp. And that is beep, the end beep, of its beep, turn. Beep. Bring on. Ah. Uh. Just like the end of Phantom Menace. Oh, it's, it's still up. Okay. Um, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 will get me to... Can I go there? 
Uh, if you have that much movement, five. Yeah, that takes exactly 15, 30. 20, 25, 30. Yeah, 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 looks good. Um, and I will full on assault it with the seagull flying in to distract. Lay again. into it. And I rolled a 17 and a 6, so that is 22. It is booming. It takes. Uh, what's your what's your um, bardic inspiration? D6 as well, yeah. Okay, so. Oh fuck's sake! So it's is this the kind you can add it to the damage? You I don't can't think add so. it to damage. Oh, I can't on this one. No, it's oh, okay. um. That's that ability to check the, attack uh, throw, saving throw. Yeah, that's the eloquence bard feature. Ah, uh, okay. On, well, I think. Or is it sure. magical inspiration? When does that hit? I think that's every bard actually now, because of Tasha's. So that's what I thought it was, but because it might be a bard. I don't know. Feature. Magical inspiration. If a creature has a die for me and casts a spell that deals oh that deals damage, you can roll the die and choose a target effect by the skull. Okay, so since it's part of Booming Blade, yes, that works. If it's just a melee attack, oh. doesn't count. Checks but out. So he can roll it on the damage if he wants. Cool. All right, so there's fire damage plus whatever your damage is. That's six fire, six plus nine, 15 oh, damage yeah. total. Nice. Six of its fire from absorb Where's the fire coming from? Begins to absorb burn elements. through the carapace. Oh, yeah. And it is with its master's own flame. Yes. And I assume that's it for Prion? Yeah, um... I can't remember if I used Action Surge or that last week. I think I remember you using both Action Surge and okay. Second Wind last time. Yeah. So I couldn't, wasn't sure, so I'm going to tick them both off. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Neris. All right. It's my turn. She's going to go back up to the edge of the grate and attempt to shoot it with the short bow again. That is a 15 to hit. That'll do it. Yes. Just enough. And I sh do I get sneak attack this round? Yeah, mm -hmm. you got tons of allies right next to it. Yes. So, not great, but 10 points of damage. 10 is amazing. That's great. It's like well, one not amazing, but it's, it's pretty solid. Uh, we'll take the damage. It's starting All to right. look rough here. Anything else from you? All right. Withering it down slowly but surely. And Saran. Ryan is going to move back to the square next to Talise, um, unless that's going to incur an attack of opportunity. Um, it's not something you'd always directly know, but it looked like from what you saw before, it has about a 10 foot reach. So you would be going beyond that by your right. judgment. So. Okay. so you'd be fine to do that. Okay, so I am going to move back to Talise's square and use 10 points of my lay on hands pool. Okay. To get the some. Elise is reinvigorated. Hit points back to our healer. There you go. Thank God. Cool. <laughs> Thank Persona, am I right? <laughs> Indeed. Oh my gosh. The founder of the feast. All right, <laughs> Mariah. <laughs> Oh, this looks super fun, guys. All right. I'm going to shimmy around to Lise again. Um, yeah, now you have to. Yeah, and I suppose... Um, oh, wow. This thing is just disgusting looking. Um, got a butter knife that cuts better than your claws do. Vicious mockery. Got him. <laughs> Got him. That's a, uh, uh, whatever it's called, your bard it's thing. Wisdom saving throw. I've got a three. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. Uh, he takes four psychic damage Ooh. and, um, uh, disadvantage on its next attack roll. Um, All right. And I'm gonna, I, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll stay put. <laughs> I've okay. had entire parties die to this music many times. Nice. Not in D&D. &D. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. All right. Nether. Nether, once again, just grits her teeth and another bolt of 
power just streaks down the hallway. Ooh, natural 19 on the die. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's going to be a six points of of uh, of the uh, the old force damage. Cool. It is looking almost dead. Now, I, uh, I did move out of its threatened space my last turn. Ah. Didn't take its attack of opportunity. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, in that case, I just did not notice, but that's fine. It's All right. in the past. We'll no problem. Um, and Talise, finally, you have your physical faculties about you again. <laughs> you can move. You can. Jesus. Yeah, you are alive. You have just received healing from your friend Saran. What do you do? I'm going to turn around and smack this thing right in its stock eyed face with my mace. Can I use... Never mind, never mind. I'm just gonna roll. What's going on? I get... I'm smacking it right in its stock-eyed face. Go for right it. You'll need to get closer ugly... to do so, but you can do that. Oh, I thought I was... Oh, it has a 10-foot. I don't have a 10-foot. Correct. <laughs> oh, 20 is absolutely a hit, though. I hate it roll so Roll your much. damage. Damn. I got a five. 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 Slowly, gently. This is how this a life, is, a is, life taken. is taken. This is how Thank life you. is taken! <laughs> <laughs> so good. So good. And it is looking so close to dead. Cool. And then I'm going to do Healing World. Healing World. Healing Word is my bonus. It's On a healing who? world. Me? On yourself? All right. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Healing. And yeah. we'll be at Melvin. This was like... Um, Where for heroism? Uh, well, I'm going to take my quill and I'm going to take aim at him and shoot a firebolt straight out of the tip of the quill at this big old lobster. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll lean around Mariah to do yeah. that. Um... Sixteen's gonna do it. All right. I don't know why that rolled damage immediately, but okay. Three points of fire. Three damage. will not be quite enough to end it. It's okay. I'm it just trying to cook it a little. Really gasping, taken over the edge size into alone. madness. <laughs> Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. What's the um, one about like? It is going to <laughs> reach compassion. out to you in front, who have been wailing on it. Um, first, um, it will reach to. Uh, um, well, Prion, Does you this... heard it, you burned it, so it will attack you to start with disadvantage, I believe, on the first one, correct? It's disadvantage Mariah? on me anyway. Yeah. Right. Uh, 18? Misses. All right, and one towards Talise. Uh, I have a natural one. Hits. Um, cool. Does that trigger Wrath of the Storm? Do you have to be hit with an attack, or is it just when a creature attacks you? It says when it attacks. Then... Oh, no. No, no. Teresa can read. I'm literate. It says when it hits me. All right. Gotcha. Never mind. Prion. I really want to use it. Mm -hmm. um, I'll hit I you rinse. plenty. Don't worry. Rinse or repeat. Again. Uh, Go for it. 13. Show me two damage, Prion. Uh, 18 to hit. Minimum damage. of four damage. All that. And the final blow on this sort of crustacean cephalopod hybrid creature is yours to deliver. The rock lobster. As it goes down to bite to Lise, she dodges out of the way. I just literally come down on top of it with the trident and just skewer it. And brain. it falls to the ground. Its head just impacts onto the deck. Yes. Really? All is quiet. About to break. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh, very I'm being good transported. Guys. What game am I playing? <laughs> and it is quiet oh, once more. Drama. The slow rocking of the ship, but the humming and sort of pulsing sound still continues from this ritual circle. But before we investigate any of that, we will go ahead and take our break. So. My friends, 
now that all of the really, really horrible things here are dead, can we, like, just take a little eensy weensy tiny little bit of a break? Rain's already sitting down, making notes, set up camp. I was like, how is that any different from any other time? It's She's not, nice. but she has sat down crisscross applesauce and is making notes about what just happened. Aww. Jake, she says crisscross applesauce too. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Well. Oh, Nether's go. Oh, sorry. No. Debris going into the room with the horrid blood runes. Or they Melvin, look like blood. Melvin Delaney, Heronius, Windchaser. Wind Sailor. Yeah. What do you make of this? Um, I'll go take a look. Looks like blood. She gestures at the various pieces of items and such that are on the yeah. thing. So, very in the center, there is very clearly items symbolizing salt marsh. Mm -hmm. um, and around it, there it's a ritual circle, a number of magical ruins, also writing and what seems to be a number of different languages, and three other circles along the outside, each of which contain some other um, seemingly random items. Um, Do they look like they might represent council members? Yeah. Um, so are you going to go and look at them and pick them up? And I have a very items? horrible arcana check, a score at all these various things. I'm happy to make whatever check you want, but I think well, people with better scores would have a better chance of finding out. So uh, there are there are the symbols. So understanding the circle itself is one thing, but there are items which are going to be very clearly identifiable to you if you simply look at them and examine them for a bit, uh, which you are welcome to do. Um, so I didn't know if you wanted to so do that. I will first, do that. Skip right to the. I'll do that yeah. during my my rest. Uh, okay. Before we take a look at them, I'd I'd like to examine the the rooms of the circle and make sure that nothing's going to happen if we you know walk over them or anything like mm -hmm. that. Okay, yeah, make an arcana check. I'll assist you. Okay. And on the crack and die, I've rolled, ooh, very badly. Um, did you roll two? I did. I rolled a three and an eight. So that's um, on Sad. arcana, a total of 16. Um, I have a plus eight. That's a 16, that's yeah. Good. So yep. this, um, there is this sort of pulsing energy that still rocks the ship, um, sending these massive vibrations sort of out, but it seems to be dissipating and your understanding of this circle while limited um, makes you think that this ritual is complete and the circle serves no more purpose. I, I think it's safe to, to walk over. Um... If you want to get stuff from the middle, I don't think there's anything more here. Okay. Well, now there's looking at the stuff that's on the outside. I'm definitely curious about the three things that are tacked up in the middle. Yeah. So there are two. There are two sets of three things. First of all, the three things from Salt Marsh, and then right. along the outside, there are three little piles of items. Right. So I'll, I'll just retrieve the components from the middle if possible okay yep you have to pull out a couple daggers from the masthead but you're able to do so okay um on that document is there a date or is it is it recent or older um as you're reading it the the writing is faded but it looks like a writ of impress okay so it is signed by all of the um, council members that you currently know. It has, yeah, the five councilmen that you know. Okay, it has so the their current signatures ones. upon it. Mm -hmm. Including uh, a excitable young one. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so more. Thank you. All right, now I'll just sort of make an investigation check on these other things then. Okay, as you're going about, you find the, in the three little piles um, 
one of them is a sort of ornate porcelain mask that seems to be covered in this strange gray dust that is in one circle in another there is a leather sack with some sort of kind of rustic rural embroidery on it inside as you open it up you see there is a withered human eye and a glass butterfly wing and finally the last one there is a uh, a, a bundle of blue beautiful blue feathers and a black gnarled tree branch crusted with sea salt It's quite the eclectic collection of items. Doesn't make any sense to me. Hmm. Does Are anyone speak the deep speech or abyssal, by the way? Sorry. A, a withered eye and a glass butterfly wing. Correct. Yeah. Thank you. Abyssal, you said? I know uh, that I did, but I don't. A no. Nerith, I believe, does. Someone Abyss speaks deep speech. A yes, deep a speech Nerith. Nine? Nice. Um, there it is. <laughs> Abyssal, you recognize some of the text written around in a circle around the masthead. Um, it says, um, it says, the Thalassic League calls home the debtor. Interesting. I would I would relay that information back to them. So do we think it's a safe bet that the council is the debtor? At least one of them. I bet it's prime water. I don't know. Are we sure Says it's prime water? And not, um, oh, I forget his name. I never liked him. He always gives us Idiot. the stink eye. He's Soulmorn's assistant lackey. His butler? That guy. His servant. Um, that guy. Scarin Wave Chaser. Um, the one that's never no, liked us anyway. Well, I, we know where he stands, mostly. Um, the priest said that the pact was forgotten. I I have a little trouble imagining that this particular collection of individuals would forget a pact. I kind of almost wonder whether it's something that's older, but is, I don't know. I, I don't really know how, I, I know nothing about this pact, but it, could it be inherited? Well, I think we'll find more answers the further down we go. I don't Probably. think there's any that are presenting themselves right now. And mm -hmm. Nether reaches down and pulls, it, picks up the octopus and sort of holds it out away from her body. And I'm going to let um, Dahl examine it. Just to check on, is this a normal octopus? Did it, is there anything about it that suggests that it's not what you would normally find in the sea? Okay, you may make a nature check. All right. I have rolled a 17, which with my plus four is a 21. Wow. Um, so as you are examining this octopus, you find that it is weirdly malleable, like any octopus mm. they can shrink their bodies to an incredibly um through incredibly Any, small spaces anything their mouth limber. can fit through Ooh, squishy. <clears throat> but you find um something sort of near the head that is solid something that's not the beak as you kind of break through and reach it open you 
pull out what seems to be a obsidian stone. Hmm. And it begins to ache in your hand and you feel, start to hear whispers in your ears that become louder the longer you hang on to it. I'm going to cast Mage Hand. Okay. And have it come up out of my hand. And the whispers sort of fade. I have it move over towards Melvin. What do you make of this? Well, I can take some time to figure it out, if that's okay. Holding Same it. material as the obelisk. Holding it seemed to make me feel not well. Uh, well I'll cast Mage Hand and, and pluck it out of Nether's Mage Hand. Okay. So that I'm not touching any of it either at the moment. I'll go find a corner to sit in and move short rest. All right. As you guys short rest, um, if, if anyone would like to look over the um, the three collections of items. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and actually, the mention of the Thalassic League itself. What's uh? There what's are history checks check available there. for all of these? Melvin, do you want to give me a hand on that? Sure. Or do you want me to give you a hand on that? You probably have the better role. Speaking from a meta perspective, probably true. I, I I can do that. That's fine. I also need to identify this thing. I'll take like a hot second for you to peruse your brain, won't it? Fair enough. Um, I have a twenty-one for history. Um. Gotcha. So what is what is this for? For the, the feathers Thalassic and League. branch? For the Thalassic League. Okay. Yes. So as he begins to talk about this, um, Jade to some extent and Mariah to some extent, this sounds familiar. Even Nether too. Um, maybe an old story or something that an old drunk man babbled about in a tavern and people just said, you're an idiot. Think of it as the Illuminati, right? People think something you roll your eyes at uh, in that same sense. Uh, it's a myth, as you know, some people say. But, you know, looking back, there is there are some old stories that tell of some sort of exodus from an unnamed group. Um, those who at one point began to follow the likes of Persona and Volker, um, sort of shunned a particular group that used to have a admiralty of the seas. It's some sort of legend, typically a fable, but there is that. With a 21, you also know, though, that some nobles in certain cities, perhaps the edgier ones, the ones who really want to claim to be impressive, claim to have a cousin who has a friend who has been at one point initiated into the Thalassic League and know the um, undercurrents of society through that. Um, it's a stupid brag, but um, it sometimes happens. So that's all you know about that, but it's a pretty good check. The like the club of the, the bone, the bone club or whatever it is in Harvard or... Um, oh. what would be oh, checks yeah, for those, like um... Skulls and bones. Skull and bones. <laughs> Just keep eating. Actually, so Melvin made the history check. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, Elena. Oh, no, I, I apologize. Um, so he knows that about the Thalassic League. Let's have um, other people take a look at these and see where their knowledge comes up. Yeah. Who would like to think about the Dusk Demask? I don't uh, think I'd like to. Sarayan. <laughs> sure. Go ahead and make a history check. I have plus two in history. <laughs> so I will. Meow. Uh, ten plus two is twelve. Twelve. Um, so you know 
you think back, you think hard studying heraldry, and you think of Porta Lucine. The masks, right. It's the, the emblem of Porta Lucine. One of them is a mask. You know that, oh, yes, they govern by a council of dukes and duchesses under the um, leadership of Marcel Guignol. That's all you think. That's all you know. But Get that a spelling in a chat somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yol. I'll happily make a, a history check on the glass butterfly wing. Okay. I would um, like to... That would be the combination of the glass butterfly wing in the sack along with the eyeball. Right. I'm gonna I go would ahead like and to use... cast guidance on debris because I never right. cast guidance. <laughs> kind of moves uncomfortably as you do that. But, um, I know. She uh, is going to use her inspiration on this because she's not so good at the history. Okay. So, well, that is double 12, so 14 plus guidance. 19. 19. No. 14 plus guidance, 18. So, sorry, I think I get 18. Sorry. So you know that there is a... Um, you've seen people come with these glass butterfly wings as little necklaces and charms before. They've come through, or you haven't seen it, but you've heard about it, you've heard it discussed um, in Salt Marsh. Most of them talk about traveling from far south, um, traveling from Baldur's Gate, and most of them talk about a little city called Victal. They rave about it, an idyllic little village, the most hospitable people you've ever met. Um, and, you know, their sore feet there's always, you know, they're always fed and given drink for whatever they need. And then if any sore feet, any physical injuries, they talk about, well, there's someone there they call, they just call mother who helps soothe injuries as well. She's um, a sage of types, um, a hermit sage. And they speak of her very highly and she offers cures to ailments for travelers for really no almost no recompense. It's a wonderful place to stop if you're ever traveling past Baldur's Gate. A handsome reward for a task well performed. <laughs> oh my god! Victal is V-I-K-T-A-L. A veritable wellspring. Um, can we get a spelling on Port Alucine as well? Mm hmm I... Posted it at some point, but here is this again. Mm -hmm. It's like the second second thing from the session. Ah, oh, I definitely didn't see that. Way back. Okay. And who is considering the blue feathers, the branch? I guess I will. Okay, Talise, go for it. Roll a history oh. check. I will gladly do that after giving myself guidance. <laughs> Can I get away with it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. A history check. Very quiet, Talise. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, Siri tried to help and then she took over my microphone. Stop it. <laughs> she tries to help. I need to turn her off of there. She's just doing her best. She's a pain in the butt. Um, <laughs> history check. Taking hard stances on Siri tonight. <laughs> I'm butt. Awful stupid, hate Siri. <laughs> so I got what? A no, no. Ooh. It that, will never, yeah, don't ever do help that. you again. Don't do that. That brings you up to now a 16. Now I'm on a watch list. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, it's weird. You've heard, um, in times of, you know, in the temples of Volker and traveling around the coasts, uh, speak, you've heard people speak of a flag that is a blank flag with a black branch on it. And it is talked about as a, um, a frightful thing, but 
really just a myth. But paired with it, the blue feathers, as you look at them, these are gulls feathers. Um, you can tell by the marking. Um, you've seen plenty of gulls and plenty of feathers. But a blue gull is something that is does not exist except for a particular place. And Mariah, you recognize this too once Talise starts to speak mm. of it. There was an island, a beautiful one, with enormously tall trees and a famously gray, tight-grained wood, perfect for building ships and other things. But it was completely demolished in a storm and tidal wave at one point. With it, the birds that lived in these trees, the beautiful azure gull was completely driven into extinction. But there are some sailors who claim to have survived shipwrecks, some who say they fled a frightening ship massive on the horizon that claim that their only warning, the only thing that led them to safety was a bright blue gull landing on their ship. The illest of omens. So, that's what you learned from that. That's some, like, black pearl level of <laughs> scary. Um, I love that you think of Black Pearl and I'm sitting here thinking of One Piece. Well, One Piece! I know. That's my different vibe, I think. Uh, well, two of those locations match up with what's on this map. So that's interesting. Oh, did we lose... That is correct. Jail? Yeah, we oh, lost no. Chelsea for a bit. I'm sure she'll be back soon. Oh. <gasps> Poor Anaris. Well, do we get our um, our you rest? Get your short rest. Now they're you still are talking about all what these the things. Stone is. Oh well, that would be a David question. Then. Yeah, I'm gonna start ritual casting. Identify. You all can thing. take your short rest, and you will be able to do so. However, you have to be touching it to do so. Yeah, I'm going to be sort of rolling it with one finger around the pages of my book. Okay. Um, you hear and... whispers that grow more and more and more intense as you do continue to cast your identify on it. Mm. About the Maybe first minute, not. it feels almost like you can feel a cold, icy breath breathing on your ear. At that point, abort, I'm going to abort. stop <laughs> and take my finger off of the stone. Remove the finger. Give up on give up on casting that at the moment. Um, and I'm gonna pull a little bit of um, a little bit of spare waxed parchment out of my pack and wrap it in that and put it into my pack for later. And I'll say to Debris, um, I'm sorry, but um, I'm not sure that I should be touching it for that long right now. Um, tomorrow I can I can prepare Identify in order to, to do that more quickly so I don't have to be touching it quite as long. Dangerous, is it? I don't know, I was hearing things talking to me, so... And, like, breathing on my neck, which is creepy. And I don't, don't like usually that. see your things talking to you. I can usually see them if they're talking to me. Or somehow sense their presence. Things talk to me all the time. I, I see. I'm gonna put it out there again that there's an evil piece of obsidian upstairs as well. So, doesn't The rain's already clunking up the me. stairs. <laughs> um, evil, really you say? surprise <laughs> me <laughs> that 
this isn't a very happy thing either. Um, point of curiosity, DM, now that you've um, revealed the entirety of this level of the ship for us. Mm -hmm. um, um, there are two ways, uh, well, actually, just one way you see to descend down to the hold besides the hatch. Uh, would and that be this? Otherwise, the ship is pretty much abandoned and wrecked, okay. besides more spiders. Ugh. What on earth is this? A fern. Um, it's a it's a asparagus fern. <laughs> huh. In two ferns. Fancy that. Um, by ma manner of descending to the hold, I assume you mean the ladder um, near the stern. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Cool. The ones leading into the light lead up. Into the light. Into darkness leads down. Yeah, am I still able to benefit from a short rest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Everyone can short rest. Thank you. I rolled so bad on my hit dice. It's depressing. You are <sighs> all rolling terrible on your hit dice. I just have to throw it there. You How are dare not, you? Not healing well. I did all right. How dare you? <laughs> oh, I can... um Play a song of rest? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. That sounds nice. Everyone roll an extra hit dice yeah. as you're recovering. Have some... Have some extra. <laughs> oh, armor of Agathis has ended. Oh, poor you. You get all your spell slots back. <laughs> that wasn't a spell slot. That was a natural ability. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I don't get any of my uh, spell slots back. Same. Me neither. I don't think any of us do other than... You're a wizardy wizard. Every... Don't you get arcane... Oh okay. yeah, I get our king recovery. I totally <laughs> forgot about that. A second level spell slot back. Oh thank God. Or two le first levels. Girl, was it Your wizard? monkey? Second level. Uh. Definitely. What's next, friends? We searching a Yeet upstairs. Yeet prion down the ladder. Whoa. Yeet that prion, Mima. Pre pre ma. Eat have, that. We have we searched Free the hole upstairs? Aww. You have. Okay, I will. As I'm being bullied to go down the ladder, I will head down the ladder. <laughs> the ram, exactly. like, pushes you down. Uh. I watch. You hear a splash. And, and Saran jumps in after him. Oh. Please tell me you dive into, you like, really two feet of me. water. <laughs> And I was like six Ow. inches. Uh, she pushed him because she wanted to get down there faster. She was like, chop, chop. So snapping. down here, there, there are no bulkheads down here. The entirety of the hold is visible. But everything seems to have crashed to one end to the port side. Um, everything lies basically in a big pile of wreckage. There is dark, murky seawater filling it to about a depth of three feet, sloshing against old, moldering crates. Three feet deep of dark water that sloshes around here. And this is the cracks the... in the hull are more visible now, so. This is the bilge? This the, is the hold. The, the there hold. is a bilge beneath, which is you do not see access to, but it's not normal for this part of the ship to be submerged. Yeah. Um, but three feet of water is walkable, correct? Difficult terrain. Okay. What if you have a swim speed? Just for you, David. You're good. Just for you. How's the water, Prion? It's a bit crackening. I, uh, pra He's lost it. Brian, it's a bit crack. Brian, get it's get your face out of the metal. It's wet. <laughs> get oh. your face out of the nasty. I'll just walk around and have a look around. Okay. Are you trying to find the crate, or yes. the? I mean, are you trying to find what you're looking for? You may make a perception check. 
Oh, is there gosh. actually an A on this? Is it just you? Um, are there any rats down here? Uh, no, it is. Well, they were all eaten. <laughs> um, not that think, you see, actually, no. I think Sarayan said she was coming down, didn't she? Yeah, she did. Mm hmm. Have you got mm -hmm. perception? Oh, like my passive? No. Have you got Just... perception? As in, are you proficient? <laughs> no. I will roll. I rolled a nine plus five. That's 14. And please move your tokens to where you would be. Is that with advantage or was that just... She's not proficient, so... How are we getting down there? Remind me. We were using the ladder. There's a that's ladder, right ladder right, right there. where Mariah okay. is. Gotcha. Hey, um, DM, is yeah? this actually a feature on a crate? The A? Yeah. A. No, it's not. Okay. Um, it is marked that way, but that's about it. Yeah. Any of these crates filled with dirt? <laughs> I just don't... It doesn't seem like it. DM, Not I'm taking glance. some time to layer translucent um, paper over my glasses again as I ritually cast Detect Magic. Okay. Prion, the crates around here are all you're really able to see with um, that check. Okay. And you don't see anything that you would think it contains valuable documents. Hey, DM. With the check of a 14. Yes. Um, can I lower myself down the ladder but not actually drop into the water just yet? Sure. Okay. Um, and from there, I will just do a, a perception-y bit to look around a little bit and see if I notice anything that has not been noticed. But that okay, entirely depends on what the Kraken does for me here. <laughs> oh, 15 plus... Where's my percent? Six, 21! 21? So... You see Serene and Prion sort of sloshing forward, though their sloshing is much quicker than you would imagine. Um, something about the Very fact that slosh. their webbed feet somehow allows them to walk through water faster as well, but that's just that. And at the very end, you see what seems to be a sturdy crate that has not fallen to the edge of the ship. It is glued in place, and it is broken in parts, probably from impacts from other bits of cargo. And beneath that, you see what looks to be a sealed iron box lying beneath the surface of the water. Uh, over there. That one. As you pointed out, one last immense vibration echoes out from the ship and suddenly you have to hang on for dear life as the ship violently rocks to the port and bo and the very um, walls, the very bulkheads begin to sort of bow in and out as if the ship is being squeezed or warped by something and then on the upper deck and below, you each see a massive tentacle punch its way through the side of the ship, which begins taking on water at an alarming rate. And then you can see this ship is being squeezed and pulled down by massive tentacles, which are erupting all over the... Nope. Um, all, all over in the water around. You know where the quarry is. You know where the what you need to get is. I will go and but get it. The ship it. is being pulled down. To do this will be absolutely dependent on rounds, and so we will roll initiative once again to see if you can retrieve Gelen Prime Water's package from the hold. Ooh. 
Alrighty. I've seen some good initiative rolls on your guys' parts. I see three rolls above 20. That's pretty good. Is anyone not on there yet? I see six rolls at the moment. Who are we missing? Not me Yelsey, anymore. Unfortunately, I see oh, yeah. anyone. Ciao. 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 Uh, Mariah, as this begins to happen, you are the first to act. Um, ah, uh, yeah. Please. That's correct. Um, these tentacles begin to pierce through the hull and thrash all about. If you would please, at the start of your turn, uh, let's see, where are we here? Make a dexterity saving throw. Okay. I rolled a nat one, guys. Doing real good here. Okay. Um, you are not able to dodge one of the swinging tentacles and take six points of bludgeoning damage as one okay. clocks you in the back, nearly knocking you prone Ow. as you start your turn. Okay. Um. Well. Um, iron strong boxes, pretty heavy. Does that, does that look like it's gonna be a, a stronger? It looks like very thick, solid iron. Hmm. Okay. Well, on the off chance that this is useful, I'm gonna hop down into the water. Um, come over here. Who goes first? Um. All right, Sarayan. Uh, I am going to reach out and grab you by the shoulder um, and a hum a very I, I layer multiple notes on top of each other into something that is very uh, consonant um, and strong and you feel yourself invigorated with bull's strength via enhance ability. Ooh. Um, I don't know why that. Oh, that's that. You don't get the temporary hit points. That's only for the 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 Constitution version. But uh, you have advantage on strength checks, and your carrying capacity is doubled. Um, Thanks. Okay, I moved ten feet for that. I'm gonna move back and then climb up to here. I believe that should be sufficient for movement. Okay, so you were moving difficult terrain through the water. Oh! Then I pro- let's see. 5, 10, 50, okay. So then I just make it back to 5 feet from the ladder. Gotcha. Okay. And that brings us to Nether. Nether jumps down into the bilge. Into the start, into the cargo hold. Just... From where? From... The um, ladder. You guys are scattered throughout. The ladder's so back here. Please assume that you were either that you were beginning this combat from. Oh, this that room. ladder! Got it. I sorry. Yeah. I thought it was the. I sorry. Now it's all I see. Good. Now I get it. Thanks. So jump down. Um, how much movement do I have left after doing that? After jumping down, you mm -hmm. used about ten feet of movement. All right, I'm going to move another twenty feet. 10, 15, 20 to here. And I'm going to take the dodge action. Okay. Um, you do... So please roll a dexterity saving throw for the beginning of your turn, which I forgot to ask for. Dexterity saving throw. And... Dodge the tentacles swinging through. I have the rolled a four. Three points of bludgeoning damage. Three points of blood. Talise, please roll a dexterity saving throw to start your turn. You dodge out of the way as a tentacle comes directly through your head. You duck under it. Take no damage. Or damn. Play with me. 
keep worrying that I'm muted while I'm doing this. Okay. So, I guess I will hop down the ladder. Ready, hop. Splash. Um, and then, is it difficult to rain if I have a swim speed? I know we talked it about it. It is not. I can't remember. Okay. So, and I will go. It's hard to hear you, at least for me. Uh, why it's so? Why are we so quiet, microphone? Okay. So then I'm gonna go the rest of the way, which would put me right about there, maybe, and then a dash, an additional thirty. Yeah. Yep. Dash another 30. Sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Hi -ya. Okay. Teresa's is failing. <laughs> Stay right there. Cool. As you do so, as you get to this point, you see some of the muddy mounds begin to writhe and move as what look to be bodies of old, decrepit sailors locked down here emerge. Undead, you say? And they rise up above the water and look at you. As you have made it to that point. Anything else for Talise? I think that's your action and your movement. Yep. She's just really excited that there's undead now. One of them looks at you with an immense hunger and strikes at you with its claws. At a seven. Nature herself One of them moves towards Nether and attacks corruption. at disadvantage. Um, 13? Nope. Nether. Oh, Teresa's excited. 13. You are muted, sir. 13 is a hit. Uh, okay. this, remember, I'm, I'm, uh, at, uh, I'm dodging. Yep, I have an 18 and a 13. Alright. That's a hit. 11 points of slashing damage. And I need Ow. a constitution saving throw. Con save. That's a, I believe, just a six. Your joints lock up. You are paralyzed. Uh-oh. <sighs> this one can't make it, but it's hungry, so it will go over to Talise and attack at an eight again. Ow. Unfortunate. Does not hit. That is the end of their turn. Sarayan, the beginning of your turn. Please make a dexterity saving throw. Okie dokie, artichokey. Let me see. Boop. A 13. You're fine. You duck Lucky out of the way of a swinging 13. tentacle. Take no damage. Dope. That's shocking. Um, so I will move towards this icky guy that is right in front of debris uh -huh. and use my long sword to slash at it swing ye let's see 17 uh, 17 yes awesome and i wield it with one hand so eight points uh -huh. of damage cool anything else <laughs> Very good. Melvin, deck save. You know the drill. It's mm -hmm. going to be the same for Prion, so just have that ready to roll. 16. No damage. Oh, good. Um, I'm going to run over here, and I'm just going to stick my head, like, lay down on the floor and stick my head down the okay. opening. I'm going to be like, uh, are, are we good? It seems like we've got tentacles and sinking. I don't like this. Oh, God, there's a lot of water down here. Oh, oh, and there's some dead. Okay, uh, I'm gonna sort of awkwardly stick my quill down and point at one of them and um, try to shoot a firebolt at at okay. the nearest undead, I guess. Um, do you have dark? You have dark vision. You're half health. Okay. I do have dark vision. Yes. I think we all have dark vision. Ooh, seventeen to hit with uh, ten points of fire damage. Excellent damage. damage. Yeah, very good. Um, this one's looking 
burnt and charred. Yeah. Anything else from Melvin? No, that'll be my turn, I think. All right. You are prone then? Yes, I'm, I'm right. prone. I will Prion. Mark that. A six. You take six points of bludgeoning damage as a tentacle Good. slaps you upside I, the head. Okay, I will five, ten, fifteen, fifteen to there. Hit the one fighting nether uh, with advantage. Eighteen to twenty-three to hit. Uh huh. Yeah, go for it. Roll that damage. Booming blade as well. No, no, that really comes. Oh my god, I just keep rolling threes. Six damage. Okay. Noted. Anything else? Um. <clears throat> nope. At the start of round two, whatever is um, the possessor of these tentacles shakes the ship and tilts it on its axis. Um, I need everyone at the top of the round to make a dexterity saving throw. Um, Automatically fail, right? As a... Uh, being paralyzed? Yes. Fifteen. Seven. Nine. All right. Thirteen. And Melvin, how you doing? Nine. Oof. Melvin, Prion, Talise, Nether, you fall prone and slide ten feet to port. Nether, you Wait, drop. Why did I these got guys moved? see Nether drop down into the water, and oh, we Nether. All oh, thankfully you can breathe, huh? Paralyzed he, under the water, but <laughs> does the undead do the same? Yes, they do. And does it move? If it, even if it did, it would not be willing. It's forced, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, uh, Mr. DM, for those of us who are nautically challenged, port is left. Yes. Thank you. What was the DC for that? Uh, or did ten. So all of us got moved. Um, sorry, Mariah, I didn't mean to move you. Oh, okay. <laughs> That was an accident. Wait, so anyone below ten? Anyone below ten fell prone, and was wa and was rolled ten feet to port. Okay. Oh, okay, I should also have not moved. My fault. I'm sorry. It's okay. Um, great. So, oh, Talise moved. Yeah, gotcha. Beautiful, Mariah. Um, from where you are, it's start of your turn. Please make a deck save. All right. Uh, you take no damage from the thrashing tentacles. Wonderful. Um, what is the condition on this critter here? This um, big guy with the tongue? Uh, he seems very damaged, and he is prone at the moment. Um, so seems he is actually damaged. below the level of the water. Oh, okay. Um, <sighs> humbug. I will shoot. Nope. Prone is not good for shooting things. Hmm. I would love for him to make a saving throw against some really, really horribly dissonant notes that are going to start blaring in his head. All right. Uh, I've got an 11 on the wisdom save, which is a failure. Eight points of psychic damage. And okay. uh, he must immediately move his reaction to move as far away from me as he can. Okay. Which provokes an attack of opportunity from Saran, should she wish. I wish. T takes two thunder damage as well. More than anything? More than anything. More than More the than moon. moon. I want to get out of festival. Uh, okay, so I will. <laughs> um, it's not I'll for just... me, it's for my granny in the boat. Do my long sword again. Go for it. Okay. Nice. 20, but not nat. So six. Um. Gotcha. You slay this one. 
You see Nether lying below. Uh, anything else from Mariah? Um, let's see here. Um, I'm going to move here. Melvin's up above. Nether's drowning. No, she's not. No, no she's she, not. Oh, she can she breathe, can underwater. breathe yeah. underwater. Um, not. Yeah. Um, not that I could really do anything about it anyway, because I already acted. So, um, I, I'm just gonna scoot there and kind of hop up a little bit onto the ladder, but not actually ascend. Okay. So just be holding onto it. Yeah. Alrighty. Never. Can I make another saving throw? You can after taking one point of bludgeoning damage. One point of bludgeoning damage. Thank you. Ow. And this is a... What kind of saving throw? Constitution saving throw. I am probably going to remain paralyzed. Unfortunately, that is the case. I rolled an eight. Below the water, not visible to the rest of you. Talise. Okay. I'm you are prone, prone underneath the water at the moment, but you can use half of your movement to stand up. I wish. shall stand. I shall be muted. No, I'm not. Cool. Oh, cool. Okay. Half of my movement to stand up. And I'm just going to turn and smack that guy with my mace. Okay. Aya. Smack that. Guy. Am I He's under the crazy. water or am I floating on the water? I believe you are. Is there any reason you would be floating but versus under? <laughs> it's what bodies Seventeen usually did. do. You are Everyone underwater. Everyone floats down here. I believe. Mm. Yeah. All right. Noise. Does a seventeen hit DM? It does. Roll your damage. Hiya! Yay! I got a six. Ooh. Crack it across the head. You see the skull fracture, but it's undead. It doesn't seem to mind as, as much as you wish. So. How dare it. Anything else from Talise? Uh, no. They retaliate, nope. each striking out with a claw. Um, I have an eight and a 14. Both miss? Both for me, they both miss. And please, Talise, roll a dexterity save for the start of your turn. I forgot that. Yeah. Sorry. Take six points of bludgeoning damage. Ow. Now it is Sarayan's turn. For... Do you Can have... I use Wrath of the Storm against the tentacles? Nope. Well, <laughs> if you want, actually, I'll allow it, it if you would like. <laughs> Just the immediate nope. <laughs> Decided that right away. Please make a deck saving throw. Okay. Um, they fail. Fuck Yay. You hear it really deep. Ow. Ow. <laughs> they take two d8s of lightning damage. <laughs> so All right. seven. You kill the cracker. Right. You see the electric energy <laughs> zaps the tentacle, which kind of recoils for a little bit, but is not really phased. Now, yeah. Saran, you're up. So, Nether is paralyzed? You cannot see Nether at the moment. Well, you can. You're right next to her. But yeah, she's pretty much invisible to you, but you realize she's under the, wa- the dark water right next to you. Okay. Um. So, I have depending on what's causing her paralysis with my lay on hands, I could cure a disease or neutralize a poison affecting her. So if she's paralyzed by a poison, I don't know if that's a thing. It can be a thing. It can be a thing. So I would like- That was how the tool worked at least, but. Okay, but there's no way for me to know without trying. Not without a knowledge check. Okay. Uh, can I make one of those? But is that my turn? That'd be your action. Okay. Can I just go? I'm, go- I'm going to go for it. We're just going to okay. see what happens. You lay I... on hands to try to remove poison and disease? Yes. You do so and you send that healing energy. Unfortunately, Nether does not move. 
Dang it. Okay, Nether, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's, tried. that's my turn. All right. How much healing energy did you do? Do I take the healing? No. I no, it's no. five no. points to Spend heal five the points. condition. Yeah. 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 So, Melvin, you're the up. box. Um, do I need to make a save? Yes, please. Thank you okay. for reminding yeah. me. Just checking. 13. No damage. Is the I assume there's a tentacle whipping around above my head or something, yes. right? Um, I, uh, I'm gonna crawl back over to the opening, muttering <laughs> under my breath about uh, tentacles and giant sea monsters and open water and stuck inside a ship, not having fun. Um, I'm gonna stick my head back down the, the opening and being like, hey, hey, guys, can we get going, please? I don't want to get stuck down here. I can't swim, remember? And There's then... something wrong with Nether! Oh, no. Oh, okay. Um, I'm going to attempt a firebolt. Um, I didn't do this last turn because I didn't think it all the way through. I am prone, so my firebolt should be at disadvantage. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Cool. And I'm also, like, last turn, so. sticking my head through a, <laughs> an opening and, like, looking at everything upside down, so hard to do it especially when you're looking at the world upside down as well yeah poking your head um, through. it definitely would cure your hiccups but fire <laughs> bolts are harder okay uh well that's a nine at disadvantage it goes wide of the undead sailor oh well i tried i rolled a not nat one but a one on my deck save peter i don't uh, know I'm just trying to try to be honest. Oof. Six points of bludgeoning to Sir Ann then. Okay. And Melvin, are you done with that? That's my turn. All right, Prion. Natural one on the save. Two points of bludgeoning. I will take your two points of bludgeoning. Um, okay. Um... I will move 5, 10, 15, 20 to there. Attack the one to myself with the bird, giving me advantage again. Didn't realize the bird oh did damage. God. Um, that's um, going to be a miss. I need your bird to make dexterity saving throws for each turn. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, what would the bird's dexterity be? So, two dexterity saving throws, please. What would the bird's dexterity be? Let me... I don't know what that would be. Statistics of an owl, correct? Yeah. I uh, rolled an 11 and an 8. Your bird takes, on the beginning of its turn, takes three points of bludgeoning damage. Is that not a pass, then? No. Eight, pl eight plus whatever. Oh, I it's thought you dexes. said it was an eight. I don't. Um, I don't it know has a what. Plus one to its dexterity saving throws. It looks like if it's the stats of an owl, eight plus one, yeah, plus one. So it takes three okay. points of bludgeoning damage at the start of your turn. So that'll be it gone then. How many hit points it do they have? Goes they up don't have of feathers. They don't have any hit points, do they? They have oh. one hit point. Okay. Well, I missed anyway, even with advantage. Um. So that was uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Hang on, I was prone, wasn't I? I mean, you could have stood up first. But... Yeah, well, that's half my movement. Um, so it's 5, 10, 15, so I could only make there. Okay, one will try to attack. I could, have only, have, I could have only have made there. Yeah. So what's he attacking me for? I thought you were, didn't you move away from this one? No, I could have made it because I had to get oh, up I see what from you prone. I, I understand. I understand. Okay. That was my cock up. Sorry. It's all good. So you missed your attack and. I missed my attack, yeah. I rolled okay. a two and a four. Ooh. Tough. So even flanking, that would be a ten. <laughs> all right. As the octopus continues to crush the ship. This hold is now completely filled with water, this level that you are on. Mariah, mm -hmm. suddenly the water is over your head. 
Okay. Melvin, as you're dipping your head in, suddenly the water comes up to the level of your head. Yeah. Um, with my, the very last bit of, well, like, as, as the water's rising up, I'm yelling, like, get the bomb! <laughs> um, <laughs> dexterity save at the beginning of your turn. Uh, 11. Oh, you take no damage. Okay. Um, I will whistle my horrid tunes into the brain of this fellow over there. Um, All right. A wisdom saving throw for him. It's a verbal component to that spell as well, right? Uh, there is, and I believe that means that I use my air and then need to yes. book it the fuck out of there. Yes. <laughs> okay. You would start suffocating at the start of the next round. Okay. So, uh, wisdom save? Wisdom save, I have an 18. Uh, so that will be six points of psychic damage, after okay. which I will ascend. Uh, so that's how many feet of movement to get up to where Melvin is? Ten feet, okay. so about 20. Okay, so terrain. 20 points of movement. Uh, um, Talise took her rope down, didn't she? Or did she leave it? Talise, did you leave she your rope it. on the... She Over left here. it? Okay. Um, did not touch it. Yeah. Um, yeah, Melvin, for those of us who are a little water challenge, maybe we should get a, get a move on. And I'm going to move 10 feet uh, towards the center of the ship. Okay. Nether. Uh, five points of bludgeoning. And you can repeat your save. You are no longer paralyzed. <laughs> um, so. But as that the, happens, um, yeah. Mariah, you, uh, hear a voice right in your whisper, right in your ear, whisper in Elvin. She is very badly wounded. I thought you were friends. Weird. All right. Talise, it is your turn. You're muted, friend. I'm muted. 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 Ich bin sehr muted. Speak loudly into the mic. Ach, yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find it on my. I had it and then I looked away and I lost it forever. My precious. Same. I would like to cast. I just had it. Um. Son of a monkey. It's a channel divinity. Where the hell did I put that? It's a turn on dead. It is absolutely, but I'm just trying to actually find it because I'm sick of their bullshit. <laughs> Turn on dead. Yes. I have a Channel 17 and a 13 on my saves. They seem strangely resilient against your turning effect. I really hate them so much. Just so much. I think you but have DC four 14 now by now, do you? It says wisdom 13. Okay. What's That's your... what I was double checking. Gotcha. What is your wisdom score right now? Seventeen. Did you take a feat or an ASI at, at fourth level? Um, I don't think I took a feat because I'm not gonna pay for D and D Beyond <laughs> to do the extra feat on my Okay. Well we should probably look at that at some point. Um yes. but in this case they all, that they both save against the turn effect. Rude! That was such a nice turn and they ruined it. And it is their um, turn unless, would you like to move? Uh, well, if I move, I'm going to trigger an attack of opportunity. For Correct. Them, aren't I? Yeah, no, I'm good. Alright, so one will attack you, the one further up, um, after they make dexterity saving throws. Succeed. Oh, you also I, need to do that. Yeah, please. I was like, wait a sec. <laughs> that sounds familiar. Did I get disadvantage on the war? The undead. What do you mean? The undead. For to their attack. attacks? No, for oh, their attacks. Okay. 
Against you, they do. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. I didn't know if they yeah. got... Uh, to I, least... I got a 16 on my deck save. Okay, you're fine. No damage. Uh, they both succeed on theirs, too. I have a 16 to hit you with a claw. Nope. Deflects off your shield, Prion. I am going to attack at a 23 with a claw. Uh, disadvantage. Nope. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Uh, tw <laughs> 23. I rolled a 24 after that. Really? Yeah, it hits. Uh, ooh. 11 points of damage and a con save. Ow. Con save. I rolled a natural one. You are paralyzed. Da, da, da. Sarayan, you see Prion go rigid. Yikes. Um, so I am going to roll my deck save, right? Because that's a thing I need to do. Correct. Ha ha. Remembering things. Okay. Doop a doop. A 10? You're fine. Ha ha. Um, and now I will take my movement. One, two, three, four to go up to that one that just hit my friend Prion and slash at it with my longsword. Go for it. 24. That absolutely hits. Hooray! This undead creature. Remember, you can smite. I know, but uh, are these worth it? I only get one. It... If oh. to get get them off the board so that you can try to save your asses slash get the box if possible, like the sooner we can get out of here, the better. Well, dope. Then I will smite. Go for it. Roll three d eight. Okie dokie. What what level actually? Uh, let me check my sheet. It says. Is there, like, okay, so it says when I hit with the melee weapon attack, I can expend one spell slot, of which I don't have any more spell slots, though. Oh, oh you have none at all? Then no, I could channel I could channel divinity it and takes then divine spell slot smite. To smite. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, then never mind. All right, in that case, you do the nine points of slashing damage. Seems Okey very dokey. effective. Melvin. Same deal. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Uh, I have a twenty-one deck save. You're you're good. I'm gonna look at Mariah and be like, but but what about the others? Are they are they coming? We can do our best to help them, but there's not that much that we can do. I will. Apparently, I'm being admonished by a voice that is angry at me. So I'm gonna stick my head back down there and do something. But. They most of them can swim, or at least breathe underwater. I can't. Melvin starts to hyperventilate a little bit. Um, it's and, good preparing yourself to go underwater and got a little extra oxygen near blood. And casts alter self to give himself gills. Very good. And will. Mm, I I yeah. I'm gonna actually. I'm gonna roll. Hmm. Well, yeah, he he dives into the water. Look and at you! Starts sinking. He's <laughs> a big boy now. Um, and then when he reaches the bottom, he's just gonna try to walk on the bottom because he doesn't know how to swim. Yeah. So. Okay. Right. Uh, I forgot. He, uh, I assume that's difficult terrain. So. It is. Um. Can probably get to there. Okay, gotcha. And that's his action movement. So you can finish your movement, Prion. You take two points of bludgeoning damage, and you can make your con save. I rolled a four. So that's nine. Nine is not quite enough to shake off the poison. Moriah. And I'm just. I know. 
Yes. <laughs> um, five feet, get down on my knees and stick my head down underwater after taking a nice big breath. Um, and uh, expend all of said air, um, casting Healing Word um, on Nether at uh, second level. Um, for 11 points of dam damage, <laughs> uh, magical healing, um, after which I bring my head back up from water and stand, and I think that's probably the end of my turn. <laughs> Alrighty. You're muted, dude. Thank you. I had one hit point left. Oh, I definitely didn't realize that. Sorry. <laughs> and that's, that's it. Um, Inaris will bane both of these guys. Forgot about her and she's calculated into how this is always done, so oh, she will be down here as well. Nether. Oh, nether stands. No longer paralyzed, but no longer uh, you do paralyzed. need to make that deck save to start. Oh, right. Um, so that would have been at while I was prone. Does that add anything to the... It's not disadvantage, oddly enough. All right. You can wiggle around while you're prone. I have rolled a 10. I see a 12, but uh, 12, no sorry, yes. damage. Well, the 10, which plus two is 12. Um, right. Uh, she is going to Eldritch Blast. Um, and you can see the concentric rings of force as bubbles from like a little torpedo of force just move through the water to strike at the thing that is attacking... My friend's in front here. Um, that is going to be a... Um, so I rolled a 13 to hit. Hits. I don't know why I rolled two damage. 2d10 damage. I just see one. I see eight points of damage. Eight points of damage. It shows um, rolling for crits, even oh, if you don't crit. Even if you don't um, crit. Y it's oh. a setting in Beyond but Point. I, I just got it. So eight. Got it. And anything else from you? Uh, I'm going to see. So I have got 15 feet of movement. I'm going to move to there. Okay. And um, the voice in next to Mariah is going to say, Better. All right. Well, you don't get to fucking judge me. <laughs> Talise, deck save, please, to start. Deck save and unmute. No damage. Huzzah! Okay. This looks very damaged. The one behind you, the one in front of you, looks in perfect health. Rude. Then I will smash it with a hammer. Smash it. Smash. 23 is absolutely a hit. Hooray! Roll that damage. Roll, roll that damage, bludgeoning. Five! Five. You cave Five. this one's head in. Five. And then I will cast Healing Word as a bonus action on non nether. I forgot your new name, I'm sorry. Debris. Debris. I was like, I know it's not debris. Debris. All right. Anything else? Any movement? Mm -mm 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 -mm. This one is dead, so it will not factor. Yeah. Oh, oh, you cast healing on nether? Yeah. Is that not, a problem? Well, not nether. I did, I did the exact same Bell. I rolled a six, DM. Um, Nether goes catatonic. What the fuck? But I did healing word, which didn't do that to you. Wait, which healing are you talking about? 
you said you cast healing on not nether As, yeah yeah on nether so i i made a roll i rolled a six total but it's only when Nether's but it was on it was on her yeah this is something else her eyes widen in shock and fear and she just sort of floats there it is not your fault talise I'm confused. Mm -hmm. Oh, the ghast is going to swing his claws at you. I don't know, 16 like, I was... get through to you? No, and I was so going to move, and then that, that whole thing oh. with Nether. I was just going to move to the other side of him, that's yeah. all. Yeah, it will still do the same thing. Yeah. Um, uh, on his yeah. turn, it will fail his deck save. Get hit and do take five points of damage. And we're on to... Sarayan. Okay, I will roll my decks. Beep beep boop. Beep boop it up. Um, Take four points <laughs> of damage. <laughs> really nailed it. <laughs> She's the feeling a little, a little seasick. <laughs> Let's see. Which is odd because she is from the sea. Um, wow. Okay. I know, right? Wow. Okay. I'm going to go up Damn. to this. Wow. I'm gonna go up to this baddie, slash at it with my long sword. Do it. Do it. Huh? Fourteen. Fourteen hits. Yay! So seven points damage. Gotcha. Decisive blow. Anything else? Any more movement? Mm, nay. All right, Melvin. Um. Uh, deck safe before anything else. Oh. No damage. 15. Great. All right. Um, well, I'm gonna uh, shoot a fire bolt if I can. I am underwater. I don't know how that works. Uh, it is magical, anything so. fully submerged has resistance to fire damage. Okay, but the fire bolt still mm -hmm. happens. Great. Um, and is is it is not at disadvantage? Correct. Cool. As long as you have dark vision. That's oh, a natural oh. 20. Wow. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> well done. Love it. Or, well, six points of damage on 2d10. Rip. Okay. So it takes three as right. it is submerged. Um, and I've, I've voluntarily rolled a wisdom save and failed and... Melvin has realized that it was a terrible idea to get in the water and is going to try to get back out of the water again. <laughs> okay. Um, Feel free to finish your movement. Um, 20 to get over to there and then another 20 to climb the ladder. Okay. So he can't get, get all the way out yet, but he's like halfway up the gotcha. ladder. Okay. Prion, take four points of damage and roll a wisdom save, please. Wisdom? Oh, no, wisdom. Constitution. I believe in you. 11 plus 5, 16. Yes. You Four break points of damage. Out yeah. of the paralysis at the end of your turn. Ready and rearing to go next turn. Um, anyone looking super damaged? Yes. Well, I'm um, 15 out of 40. Thanks to Mariah and uh, um, right. Talise, I'm much better. But also in a coma now. Which stunned. Um, Inaris will heal you for five hit points. Freon. Oh, for me. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, Mariah. Yeah. Deck um. Save. Let's do that. Let's do that deck save. Uh, nineteen. No damage. All right. Um, how far how far up the ladder is Melvin? Uh, halfway. Halfway? Is there enough room to stick my head back down there? I'm five feet below you, I think. Still. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there is. Um, wonderful. Then let's throw. Uh, who's really bad off right now? And also, what's the range on healing word? Sixty feet. Um. Who's worse, Talise or Prion right now? Uh, I'm exactly half, 20 Prion. out of 40. 
Absolutely okay. pre-owned. Oh, okay. <laughs> Peck down under the water. <laughs> um, for a first level <laughs> healing word on uh, Prion. Uh, for six. six points of healing. Sick, you're not even um, sure. And I, I stand back up and yeah, well, yeah, actually, I'm just going to stay. Nope, I'm going to stand. I, I don't know what to do. I like, I like look at Anarius <laughs> 10 feet away from me. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> Did you have an action you wanted to use? I, can I shoot? Crossbows work underwater pretty oh, well. Oh, they do? Okay. Yeah. Sure. While I'm down there, I'll reach reach under and try to shoot the um, the the dude. All right. I guess. Are you laying down or are you climbing down into the water? Um, I'll like occupy the 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 bit of okay. thing. Go above. ahead and roll that straight roll. Sixteen hits. Sixteen. Um, for three points of piercing damage, and then I will Noted. climb back up and okay. get out of the way for poor Melvin. All right, Nether's turn. Uh, Nether spends her turn being stunned. Sorry. Hey. Police. <laughs> Do I... Is there any way that I would have noticed Nether's reaction? Uh, probably would have noticed it, yeah. How comes when Mariah did it, then it didn't do it? Yeah. Ugh, so... I have no idea. <laughs> I I think I know. It bums me out. It's a mystery. Ugh. It's not that much of a mystery. I would like to smack this dude in the face. All right. And I came in the face. Uh, for an eight. Eight is not going to hit, unfortunately. Do you have anything else you would like to do? Well, I have a deck save that I have to do. You do. It's a 12. No damage. Ooh, this guy is going to deck save at the start of his turn. Uh, he succeeds. No damage. Attacks Sarayan because you look all holy and I don't like it. Fair enough. Uh, 19 to hit. That does not hit. Really? Wow. That's AC great. 20, baby. Amazing. Baby. All right. Good thing. No saves needed. That is the end of its turn. And it's your turn in a deck save to start. And it's bind. Uh, okay, look. Let's see. Twelve, so I'm fine, no right? Mm -hmm. Ha ha. Uh, I'm gonna do a little more stabbing with my longsword. <laughs> Just a nice big pullback stabbing. Yeah. You know, impaling. Oh, what? How? Uh, sorry, DM. How much damage did I take? I was stunned. How much damage did I take from the tentacles? Sorry to interrupt. One there point of is. bludgeoning. One point of bludgeoning. Thank you. Uh, twelve. I'm sorry, Saray, 12 is not quite enough. Yee. Okie doke. That's my Melvin. Turn. Deck save. Save. You know the drill. 10. You're fine. Oh, thank God. Um, I'm gonna turn around on the, uh, on the, on the ladder here and point with my, my quill and fire another firebolt as I'm climbing out. Okay. Um, hitting AC 18. Hits. For another one point of fire damage. Halved to one. <laughs> yep. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to climb out. Okay. Breon, you uh, can take a turn as normal. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. I'm going to swim straight past him to there. All right. Uh, um, eight to hit you with the claws. Missed. Please make Am a deck I... save to start the turn, though. Oh, yes. Deck save. I haven't passed one of these yet, and I still haven't. Five points of bludgeoning. 
and I will try to lift this thing. Okay, what is your strength score? 16. 16. You hoist it, and you feel like you can move, but at minus 20 feet you're from your normal speed. Um, okay. Peter? While carrying this. Oh, do you remember, did I take that tentacle damage on my first turn? Was that, or was that after my turn? You took it on the first one. Oh, my first turn? Okay. Because I, I thought I needed to make a concentration save for my enhance ability on Sarayan. Him trying to lift the thing reminded me, but I cast oh. it on my first turn, so if the damage came in before that, I should be fine? Correct, correct. That's right. Great, That's right. okay. Um, does that take... Obviously, I've, I've moved. Is it an Item action interaction to lift it? To lift it. So it's, it's an action, yeah? Okay. Yeah. Item yeah. interaction. It's not an action to lift it up. Okay. Um, I will action surge. No, I can't move again. I haven't right, taken I? an action yet. Oh, okay. I will... Could I have done that while I was passing him? And stabbed him on the way past? If you want to take your action, yeah. Yeah, well... Can't, I, can't, I can't move again, can I? Instead? You can you can, you, you can spread your movement wherever you want in your turn. Yeah, I've moved already, but... I can't, like, dash now, can I? Is, is my Only action. if you action surge? Or... So... You've moved up. All I've heard is you've moved up. Yeah, it is not 25. an action to pick up the chest. It is an right. item interaction. So you still okay. have your action and whatever movement you have left, and you can take your action, but you cannot attack while holding the chest. It will take two hands firmly to carry it. So can I dash, can I dash now instead of taking my action? You can, yes. Yeah. Um, and that's half movement, yeah? So That is your full movement over again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got 35 left, so I can only move... 15 of that, you say? Correct. Okay, so 5, 10, 15. I'm there with the chest. Okay. <clears throat> and while I'm there, I can then action surge and stab it. You will have to drop the chest. That's, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um... 19 on the dice. So that's 24, 25 to hit, flanking. All right. Uh, 25 absolutely hits. There's no flanking. Uh, oh, my God. My damage dice has only rolled threes. That's <laughs> another six damage. All right. And it's my fault. I misread. Uh, from here on out, it will take an action to pick up the box. Right, okay. So you drop it there, and you swing, and you hit for six points of damage, you said again? Yes. Amazingly consistent. All right. It is the end of your turn. Small. It seems to be rolling. It's three. Top of the round. Who's the most damaged? Uh, Breon? I, I'm 21 out of 40, Breon. so I'm half health. Anyone below 15? Okay. We'll wait to see uh, where her things goes. Top of the round, though, um, the water encompasses the second layer of the ship. Like we have like on the floor or we're in Completely like submerged. Swimming? Oh. That's a problem. Mariah, it's your turn. Well, that changes <laughs> my plans immensely. Uh, how long can I breathe underwater for? What are the rules for that again? Um, a number of minutes equal to your con mod. Okay. And then um, after that, you begin suffocating. Have we not got All a right. potion? Huh? We got a potion of water breathing. Didn't we? Oh my god. Fucking fuck. Okay. <laughs> 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 um thanks for the reminder um this seems like the prudent moment to the, is that an action yes to, to take a potion that? it is okay i 
will consume the potion of water breathing. <laughs> um, and... Oh, God. Uh, yeah, okay. I'll, I'll pop back down to my little ladder perch and shoot the fellow who remains. All right. Took an not action good. to drink a potion. I'm not going to hit on Never mind. I don't do that, actually. I don't. That doesn't even happen. It's a pipe dream. Oh, because um, you can't do the action. Yeah, I imagine for a moment how cool it would be to shoot him, but it doesn't happen. Um, and up. so instead, Sorry. I am gonna. I, I'm gonna hang tight, I guess. At least you can breathe. Yeah, at least I can breathe. Uh, Never. Never is blind. Please, both of you take. Um, or or I am. Uh, uh, make bro? deck saves too. So. Right. Okay. Uh, thirteen. Dexterity. Okay, Nether take two damage. Okay. Um, breathing underwater, does that mean you can, like, talk? Yes. Okay, then actually on my turn, I do, I will shimmy down into the ladder area and yell towards Nether, in, observing the catatonia um, and hang tight. Okay. Right. Nether, you take a bludgeoning damage that knocks you, I don't know, maybe out of your stupor, so. I can't, I can't see anything. I can't see. And she can't because her familiar is up above the water. And so she begins feeling around, looking for the wall, and tries to start making her way back towards the ladder. Okay. Okay. Calculate that movement. It's not difficult terrain for you. Um, any? Can I move on my speed because I'm blinded, yep. or is it difficult terrain because I'm blinded? No. Nope. It is not. Okay, so I can move to there. I will do a dash action. I right. make you it. Can feel free to finish your movement, and we'll start Talisa's turn. All right, so I'm gonna be there. Please deck save Talise. Deck save Talise. I got nine. Take six points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. Now. Oop. Cool. Um, then I will scoot myself next to Sarayan. Uh huh. My spell thing. You'd be better off using sacred flame. Except we're underwater, so it's going it's to radiant get... damage, though. It is not You're fire. You're right. I always forget. Okay, well, Jade, get out of my head, because that's what I was going to do. <laughs> and, and it's got minus four. It's got a, mi a d4 minus save. For bow. I've got a five to save. On a DC. Five damage. radiant damage. Yep. Beautiful. Anything else? I would like to cast um, Helium Word on okay. Creon as my bonus. All right. Oh, can thanks. calculate that. And in the meantime, you can finish your movement or it's going to be the gas turn. Do you move away? Um, I'm going to. Yes, I will. Okay. It it's will take take, that it's taken his attack of opportunity already on me. You didn't move away from that one. Or did you to go, to, it. A, to, yep. go to the thing? Oh, you're right. Good point. Hey, had a good roll, too. Yeah. So, I go so to uh, Talise, you can finish your movement, move away. It's its turn. At the start of its turn, rolls a 14, which is going to save regardless, so it's not going to take damage. Uh, looking at the two of you, going to attack the Holy Warrior again. I have a 19, but let's see, minus two from the Bane. New. It's going to miss. It's going to be the end of its turn. It's so hungry, but it can't get at you. And it's your turn, Sarayan. I'm going to hit it again. All right, deck save first. Of course, after I do my deck save. Yeah, always. Take six points of bludgeoning damage as a oh, tentacle beans. connects with you. Beans. Beans. Hit the okay. thing. 
All right, now I'll hit the thing. Smack the mama. 13 mm -hmm. hits. Yay! Just enough. 10. 10 slays this last creature. Ha ha, obliterated. Nope, not Wait, not Sarayan's you. dead. <laughs> you killed Sarayan. Um, all right, so that's the guests Back done with. To the but pit. you still need to get this thing out of here. Sarayan, you have swung with that. Anything else you do with your movement? A singular strike. <laughs> Uh, I just yell, back to the pit. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Feel free to complete your movement. Melvin, you're up. Um, dex save? Dex save. Natural 20. All right, you're fine. <laughs> and then, um, I'm going to look back at Mariah and Anaris. Can Anaris breathe? She is, she cannot. She is going to start moving pretty quickly. Okay. Um, um up. And I'm I'm going to move. I don't want to go up those stairs cuz I know where those um, lead. Would would she you do, in fact. have gone through those stairs or would she have gone up through the safer way? Um she might have gone the safer way. It would take her some time to get there, but she's got some constitution. She'll be fine. And I had been meaning to mention that I had been wanting to check these rooms before our short rest. There's nothing interesting in them or cool. valuable. Yeah, but just before my first detect magic ended. Yep. Um, and then I'll... This is not moving. the time to loot, Melvin. <laughs> <laughs> it's always time to loot. It's always time I'm to loot. loot gremlin, like... okay? <laughs> is that I a like box of crayons? Oh! <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I love looting Something. in dangerous times, but this is... Um, no, but uh, Melvin is underwater, so he's not happy gotcha. still. Um, he's moving Prion. toward the exit. Prion, is it's a... a deck save to start. Okay, well, I, do I bother? Because I've, I've fouled all of them so far. Yes! Well, you could just take the damage if you want. Uh, roll 19. Oh, look at you. You succeeded. Take no damage. Is there any holes in the ship that I can get this thing out of? swim out. Um, they are mostly plugged by the tentacles that are... Whatever. I pick it up around. and I grab it. Alright. Action to pick it up. Yeah. It is very heavy. I will give a little hint, though. If two of you moved it at the same time, you might be able to move it a little faster. I will nod to Sarayan and then pick up one side and wait for her. Okay. Clonk, 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 clonk. Cool. Uh, let's see. Do we do anything at the start of this round? Uh, nope. Uh, so, Mariah. Um. Deck safe. Yeah, that's a thing that needs to happen. <laughs> um. Please don't suck. 13. Um. Can I, um, I, I don't remember how this works. Um, can I utilize part of my movement to move Nether? If she's Half speed. willing. Okay. Um, then I will reach down and um, full dash with her towards the middle if she is willing to come with me. Okay. okay. I assume she so, is. You can do that with your action. So yeah, she 30... feels your hands and she yep. grasps a hold of you and just holds on much yep. heavier than you used to her being. Well, After that, it's your turn, Nether, unless you have a bonus action, Mariah. So 30 feet would bring us both to about here. Difficult she would be... terrain unless you have a swim um, speed. I, I dash? Or oh, I see. like yes. full movement, Does, taking correct. her with me. Does the difficult terrain stack with the half movement Doesn't. from dragging? So she can drag her 30 feet to, with a dash Okay, action. great. So... Uh, wonderful. If Nether didn't have a swim speed, it might be a little different, but Nether right. does. Right. And that's that. All right, Nether, it's your turn. Uh, I gotta get out. I gotta get out. And she grabs you and starts pulling you, Mariah. Teamwork! Uh, teamwork to move you. Um, Mariah does not have a swim speed, so das action. Same. Same, so we move 30 feet. Okay. Um, Going and up the, the water hatch. is now reaching the top of the hatch. Okay. Um, how far up do we get? 
I assume 10 feet, you could probably bring her to where you could get air. Oh, okay. yeah, great. Yeah, 10 feet. So, yeah. So you're basically break at the, the surface. Edge, of, yeah. edge of this hatch right now that you gotcha. opened. And as we get to the top, I could see again. Right, yep. Move myself. <laughs> Deck save, please. And you also see that there are no th writhing tentacles up on this deck. They're around, but they're not inside and thrashing around once you get to this point. 17. You're fine. Yay! And I'm going to dash up to the second level, which is... Cool. Up to the second level. Puts me there, and then another 30. Which puts me somewhere in the middle. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, okay. Okay. Just dashing like crazy. Um, quick question though for next turn. Can I cast shape water and change the direction of the water to help boost somebody's speed? Sure. Yeah. Do you like that that siphon thing that squids do? Just yeah. yeah. Give them, uh, by doing that, we'll give them, the carriers, um, 10 more feet of movement. Oh, thank you. Cool idea. Um, Hi. so Sarayan, it's your turn, so you guys can now move in tandem. Um, because your combined strength is now greater than 18, you can move your speed minus 10, but since, uh, um, Talise is helping you with the power of Volker to control the water. You can move your regular speed. Please make an athletics check and a dexterity saving throw at the beginning of the turn to see how you handle this weight as Prion hands you half of the, um, the control. Does enhance yeah, ability do anything? Yeah, advantage on athletics. That's Yeet. perfect. Please don't drop it. You do not drop it. And yeah. you guys can use your full movement to get 60 feet. Do you still want my deck All right. safe? So what, here's what we're gonna do here. We're getting to the end, yes. Please Prion and um, Saran both roll two deck saves. I have a 13 and a 15. You guys are dexterous AF. <laughs> oh, 16. <laughs> Combat combination of some of this, the enhanceability and everything. Um, you do not take further damage from the tentacles. You are able to get the box back up upon deck. You see now that your jolly boat has been crushed by the tentacles. However, a contingent of your veteran sailors is about 50 feet away in another boat, um, signaling a torch. Um, it seems that the octopus is completely ignoring your ship and the other, um, the smaller boat. And so they signal that they will, if you can just jump and get it just a little bit off, they will pick you up and row you back. With your dexterity saving throws, the rest of you, you will not take any more damage. So we will call this a successful recovery nice. of the treasure. Yay! Yay! That would be great treasure. And as you are rowing away, you see the tentacles wrap all the way around and pull the emperor of the waves down to the depths. Um, DM, one thing. Uh, since Melvin can't swim, if the top deck is underwater by the time he gets there, he will not be able to get clear of the ship he on his own. Walk? It, the, the top deck does not go underwater yet. Oh, okay. You have a couple more rounds until that. So. Perfect. Thank you. Good job, but. guys. That's a tough one. Uh.